This is the Rogie Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogie. Doctors at the KCI Institute at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland have announced the first use of CRISPR, the revolutionary gene editing tool inside a person's body. The tool was used to modify the genes responsible for a particular form of inherited blindness. And those responsible for pioneering the effort say there's a real potential to not only restore the patient's vision, but open up a new line of medicine specifically used to target an altered DNA. If the first few attempts seem safe, doctors plan to test it on 18 children and adults. Charles Albright, chief scientific officer at Adidas Medicine, says, We literally have the potential to take people who are essentially blind and make them see. Construction is set to begin for a large telescope array dedicated to detecting natural and artificial sources of optical and infrared light. Once operational, the system, called Panoceti, will be capable of scanning the entire sky, significantly boosting our chances of detecting alien laser signals. The telescope has been in development since 2018. Panoceti, which stands for Pulsed All-Sky Near-Infrared Optical Search for Extraterrestrial Intelligence, currently consists of two prototype telescopes. These telescopes have started to collect raw data, allowing the researchers led by physicist and astronomer Shelley Wright from UC San Diego to test the new design. Though it's just the start, the entire array could eventually consist of hundreds of telescopes. And the system will be used to observe natural phenomenon, such as fast radio bursts or FBRs. Panoceti will be capable of detecting infrared radiation, which could help with the detection of extraterrestrial Dyson spheres, a hypothetical megastructure popularized by the late Freeman Dyson. The Panoceti team is still considering possible locations for the array, and construction is scheduled to start in 2021. UFO experts claimed that an alien vessel as big as the moon was captured by NASA's SOHO. The alleged UFO was spotted by NASA's solar satellite and reported on by YouTube channel The Hidden Underbelly 2.0. According to the owner of the channel, the strange object was recorded moving across the solar system on February 29th. The camera known as Stereo A was positioned to observe the sun. In a short clip recorded by the camera, various planets such as the Earth, Venus, and Mercury can be seen orbiting in the solar system. Then, an unidentified object appears in the video and starts to move towards the planets. Unfortunately, after a couple seconds, the strange object disappeared. This is the Rogie Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogie.
Broadcasting from a shack on a hill in the Mossy Creek bottoms of Cane Creek, Arkansas, this is Lighting the Void, and we are live on the Fringe FM Tuesday night, March the 10th, on into the 11th, and tonight our guest is investigator, pioneer, and author Joshua P. Warren. This is going to be a pretty cool and in-depth conversation about a lot of things that we discussed on this show. And uh, the guy has a magnificent mind, and he's also done professional radio, too, so you know it's going to be a cool conversation. That's coming up here in just a moment. I want to give a shout-out to all of the people that make this happen just real quick. AncientLifeOil.com, Metaphorical Archaeology with Barbara Charlton. That is really kind of kicking off. You want to give them a call, right? If you've had paranormal trauma, if you've had uh, post-traumatic stress from a paranormal experience, you can get a free session, pro bono, from us via the Fringe FM. Just give them a call at 214-995-3754. And GetTheTea.com. Right now, there's killer prices going on. A lot of people are doing stuff for... Uh, I think everybody because of this coronavirus thing. So we want to stay, you know, healthy and we want to stay as fit as we can. And we want to get our immune systems built up. And that's pretty much all we can do about that right now. Uh, other than panic, right? Uh, anyways, yeah. Thank you to all our sponsors for the on the network. If you want to support the show, you can donate at the uh, donate button on the website there. Also grab you a t-shirt and uh, show us your picture because we want to see what you look like. And if you want to keep a good track of UFOs, head over to ufoseeker.com. Remember, the UFO Seekers is one of the only people that got a shot of Area 51 here lately. You remember that. That thing circulated all over, coast to coast and stuff. And a lot of people don't know those pictures. They came from Tim. They came from UFO Seekers. UFOseekers.com, at UFO Seekers on Twitter, and go watch their new season, youtube.com forward slash UFO Seekers at YouTube. And you can give them a call, too, if you've had a sighting at 661-UFO-7889. That's a lot. We get a lot of phone numbers on the show, don't we? That's crazy. The one you really need to remember tonight, though, specifically, if you want to call in, is 1-800-588-0335. That's the number to call into the show. And uh, the Ozark Paranormal, or it's Ozark UFO Conference, is coming up quick. It's just I can't believe how fast it is. Springtime almost already, and it's beautiful outside. Time is flying by, and in just a few weeks, that's where we're going to be, in the Ozarks, in Eureka Springs. So if you're around that area, come hang out with us. Come see us. It'll be cool to meet you. All right, so let's uh, get on with the show here. I don't think I got any other announcements to talk about. Negative. All right, let's do this. So Joshua P. Warren is here with us, and he is an investigator who pioneers the amazing relationship between the mind, energy, matter, and strange phenomena. The author of over 20 best-selling books, including Use Use the Force, The Jedi's Guide to the Law of Attraction, and The Wishing Machine Workbook. And he has appeared on numerous TV programs on the History Channel, Discovery, Nat Geo, Animal Planet, Sci-Fi, TLC, and starred on the Travel Channel series Paranormal Paparazzi. He travels the world investigating mysterious phenomena and made the cover of a science journal. And in 2004 for lab experiments regarding energy fields and nature related to the brown mountain lights. Now, as the creator of the wildly popular Wishing Machine Project, he has helped thousands of people around the world change their lives in profound ways, manifesting extremely good fortune. That's always good. We're definitely going to have to talk about that. And each week, he produces the creepy Vegas ghost and UFO show on the Vegas Strip. And this May 29th, May 29th and 30th, actually, He is producing a huge event in Las Vegas called Finding Your Magic, How to Hack Reality, and it will teach you how to manifest whatever you want in your life, and it will be his last conference, so he'd love to meet you there. To see his mind-blowing photos and videos glimpsing into other realms, you can visit his site at joshuapwarren.com. Joshua P. Warren, first time on Lighting the Void. Thank you for coming on the show, man. Hey, Joe. It's a pleasure to be with you. Thank you for having me on the program. Yeah, it's a special day for you out here. What's going on? <laughs> okay, so I you want to hear the the full story because <laughs> it's 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 quite a lengthy one. But it, let me let me just start with I have an alien uh, in my house right now that they say is uh, a living, breathing, spiritual being, and yet it's four feet tall and it's made of wood. And it used to belong to Rush Limbaugh and Art Bell. Um, does that make any sense at all? Yeah. Well, it <laughs> makes sense that you have a, yeah, so far, I'm good. <laughs> okay, so here's here's the beginning of the story, seriously, because uh, this is the first opportunity that I've had to tell this story on a radio program. 
So uh, I have been uh, working in, in broadcasting circles and TV and all that stuff, as you mentioned, for uh, 27, 28 years, something like that. I mean, I started when I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. And um, Art Bell, uh, back in the day, on when he started Coast to Coast AM, he was interviewing me. And the long and the short of this is, in the 1990s, there was this big cigar craze that sort of hit in, in our country. And everybody, all the actresses like Julia Roberts, they were all smoking cigars. And there was this guy who lived in Delaware named uh, Daryl Hussey. And he used to make these cigar store Indians, you know, that have been these popular statues since the 1800s that yeah. you put there cigar store well he used to listen to rush limbaugh every single day and so one day he saw uh an issue of the national Enquirer that had rush limbaugh standing next to an alien and so darren thought it would be a funny thing to instead of making a cigar store indian to make an alien statue. And so that's what he did. He made a four foot tall, 100 pound wooden alien statue. He drove to New York City, where Rush Limbaugh had his studio at WABC. He dropped off this wooden statue at the office, and that was the last he heard about it. Right. So, a couple of years later, now he crossed the country to Marina del Rey, California. Art Bell is at a talk radio seminar called the R and R Talk Radio Seminar, and he's on stage there. And uh, he, as a matter of fact, he's having a conversation with Matt Drudge. And at the end of their conversation, the CEO of Clear Channel comes out and says, "Before you guys leave the stage, Art, I have a gift for you from New York from Rush Limbaugh." And they bring out this alien statue. And so, and I have video footage of this, which you can see on my YouTube uh, channel. So, so Art comes up and hugs this thing and says, oh, my gosh, I was in Russia's studio, and I admired this, and we, we stuck a $5 bill and a cigarette in his hand, blah, blah, blah. All right, so anyway, so Art gets this thing, keeps it in his studio for years as he's doing his show. And then, this is the weird part, Joe. One day, Art calls me, and this was at, well, the first person he talked to was actually at my, my friend Mobius, but then he got in touch with me, and he said, I have got to get rid of this statue. <laughs> I said, why is that? Because like, you, this is a beloved item. Why is that? Yeah. And, and he said, well, when Rush had it, Rush's wife said that she saw it turn its head one night. And that was too much. That freaked her out. And he said, so then when I put it in my house, he said, I now have, uh, he had a, his, his wife died and he had a new wife. He said, my wife and my little daughter are freaking out because they're saying that this thing is coming to life and running around the house and I got to get it out of here. And I thought he was joking, Joe. I really did. Uh, but he was not, he was dead serious. So I had this invitation to go to Art Bell's house and get this statue. However, I was in the middle of shooting an episode of Ghost Adventures on the Travel Channel with Zach Bagans, and then I was going from there to a conference in Michigan. There was no way that I could uh, could make the trip. And so I had a friend of mine, a director from Los Angeles named Jim Castle, go to Art's house and get this statue. And Art was so nice, he got down on his hands and knees and he signed the base of it. And, and he, he actually, and we, had, we had pictures of all this. Oh, that's and, cool. And um, yeah. did a handwritten note. So anyway, this thing was shipped to me in, in Asheville, North Carolina, where it was in my museum for approximately 10 years. And I could tell you about story after story after story of very weird things happening with this statue in my museum. However, unfortunately, last month, I had to close down the museum. And that is because the museum was located in the basement of the Asheville Masonic Temple, which is a glorious building, but it's about 110 years old. And the, the basement was flooding, and they were having a lot of problems. And so we had to shut down the museum. So anyway, just today, Joe, this thing, it was, it, we shipped it across the country just today, 
Carvel the alien arrived here in Las Vegas, which is where I live right now, and I have this thing in my living room, and I'm going to put a camera on him and put some instruments around him, but I swear to you, I can't go to the fridge and get a beer without turning around and seeing it looks like there's a guy standing in my room and he <laughs> he seems to have his spirit you know what i mean yeah right so, right so so yeah so it, it's been a long and interesting day but um what do you think joe i mean do you think Man, that, uh, possible I'll, this thing has a spirit yeah because here's the thing like i've got stuff like i got a crystal skull here that a friend gave me and i swear this thing whistles like i've, I've heard whistling in here and they even told me that they said you know uh, it wasn't her. It was another person that had another crystal skull. Like they, these people take care of these things like pets, right? Yeah. And here's right. what here's what I think. Like if you really look into it, and everything is energy, right? So if somebody puts all of their energy and intentions and whatever, or there's all kinds of weird stuff you can do things magically to items or statues, stuff like that. Sure. I mean, but it could. The thing is, is is it really a spirit or is it like a thought form or an elemental or something like that? See, that's the, like a tulpa that's kind of in an item. I wonder. That's definitely strange, man. Yeah, well, that's you. You bring up a very good point because really, what we're talking about is how to define life in general. I mean, um, because yeah, tulpas, golems, you know, three dimensional thought forms, holographic projections that come from either, you know, sometimes just collective uh, sources like a collective group of people or individuals. These things can sometimes manifest. And yet you have to wonder, you know, is there really a big difference between you and me and the dog and the cat and and one of these dolls or statues that takes on some of the attributes of life. And I used to think that the idea of like dolls coming to life and stuff like that was the dumbest, silliest thing I'd ever heard. Uh, but then I went down to Key West, Florida, and did uh, an extensive investigation of Robert the Haunted Doll. I even actually wrote... Uh, a, a short book about him called Don't Play With Robert, the World's Most Haunted Doll, uh, which you can find at joshuapwarren.com. And the thing is, when I was down there, I interviewed um, lawyers and politicians and people who ordinarily would never talk about a haunted doll, who looked me in the eye and said, listen, this thing came to life. All right, this thing got up and moved around, and and they were just so believable that I started opening my mind, and I thought, you know, we can't even understand exactly what the relationship is between the mind and the body. Uh, what is it that makes a human able to animate? The body, just, you know, if, if I want my arm to move up and down, I just think I want my arm to move up and down, and it does it. Well, where, where, is, where is the force coming from? We can't explain something as simple as that. Right. And so maybe it is possible that some of these, these things that we usually consider inanimate material are able to be animated with this thing that we call life or spirit or something that is so fundamental yet we don't really understand it and so i'm open to the idea that these objects can become well i, I hate to use the word but possessed yeah well i mean i think they can too that doll i actually wanted to see that doll now you're talking about the one that's in the keys that you got to go down in florida to see is that the one that yeah, you're you talking about go- you got to go to the East Fort Martello Museum in Key West, Florida, and see God. Robert the Haunted Doll. And he's about three feet tall. He's wearing a little sailor outfit. He has a little stuffed yep. lion. That's it. But uh, you know, and, but it's a it's a beautiful place. You don't need too many excuses to go to Key West. But uh, yeah, that's that's where he lives. So, shall we say? <laughs> so, what are your thoughts, man? Like, did you did you do you think? I mean, obviously, you witness this with your statue, you know. Is the statue and the doll the only experiences you've had with stuff like this? I mean, you've well, been well, doing I, investigating for a long time. I'm sure you've had a lot of strange things happen, though. I've been a professional 
paranormal investigator for 27 years. And by professional, I mean, yes, people actually pay me uh, to travel around and explore these bizarre things. I've investigated all of Vlad the Impaler's castles in Transylvania and Romania and uh, the Mayan pyramids and the Tower of London. And I lived in the Bermuda Triangle for five years. And uh, I mean, I've, I've done a lot of stuff. And having done all that, what I can tell you is that I... I have never actually looked at a doll or a statue and uh, and, and, and seen that thing move. You know, I've never had that happen. I, I'm from Asheville, North Carolina, by the way. That's where I was born and raised. I just moved out here to Las Vegas a couple of years ago, and now I produce the Creepy Vegas Ghost and UFO show here. Um, but... You know, in in North Carolina, uh, I always grew up with all of these really interesting stories in the mountains there uh, related to the supernatural and folklore and whatnot. But I never actually uh, saw one of these objects move. But I will tell you this. um, When I first got Carville... uh, Again, he, he was shipped from, at that time... Uh, well, actually, he was shipped from L.A. because Art Bell had him in Pahrump, and then my friend lived in L.A., and he was shipped from L.A. to Asheville. And the night that I got him, I was in my museum by myself setting him up properly because the next day the media was going to come. The news was going to be there and do a piece about this. So I was there by myself, 11 o'clock at night, and I was very particular about how everything was being placed, all the signs and the lighting. And uh, now, again, this statue is 100 pounds, four feet tall. It's made of wood. I can't remember what kind of wood, but I I do have that documented. So anyway, um, I got everything just perfect, just, just so for the cameras. Then I left, and then the next morning, I came back um, probably no later than 9 or 10 in the morning, and I walked into the museum, and I was instantly irritated. Uh, I was really ticked off, to be honest with you, because I looked over, and the entire statue had shifted at least 20 degrees to the right. So I thought somebody had come in there and sort of messed with me. Um, but then I realized, okay, nothing else is, is moved in here and there's no evidence that anybody came or, or left that we have a, we had a security code that you had to put in. Nobody else had punched that code. And all of a sudden I realized, oh my God, like this might be, this might be true that this thing, I mean, this big chunk of wood somehow moved at least 20 degrees in the middle of the night. And so that is something that I'm going to be keeping in mind as I further document the activity with Carville. And, and of course, he's called Carville the alien because Rush Limbaugh thought he looked like the political pundit James Carville. Um, but as far as Robert the doll is concerned, down in Key West, I never saw Robert move, but I will swear to you that uh, if you walk into that room, and when I first quote unquote met Robert the doll when you walk into that room if you're kind of nice to him and you say hey Robert I'm my name is Joshua I'm I'm here with respect I just want to educate people it almost seems like his spooky face turns into a smile so um and maybe it's my imagination but that's you know so I can't I can't say to you that I have almost you know like I want to. I want to use the word animatronically. Have seen one of these things move, you know, like that. Right. But uh, but there may be something to it. I mean, I'm, my mind is much more open to it than it used to be. Now you know what I, I have had things. Actually, you know, you go to like you put something somewhere, and then you wake up and so and it's moved. Like I've had. Okay, well, you, since you're in radio, you probably get stuff in the mail or your PO box from people, stuff like that. You never know what you're getting, by the way. You never know what people have done to it, their energy or whatever. And I've had items, actually, that have caused those things to happen where stuff just starts moving around. Like, you don't actually see it move, but you're like, I know I didn't put that there. I know I'm not crazy. And there's nobody in here, that kind of thing. So it's funny how a lot of this stuff happens, and you know something's up, but you can't really prove it. That's the the hard part about it most of the time, you know? 
Yeah, well, there is this perception out there that um, it's it's very cut and dry, that there there's a, a cause and effect. And sometimes, yeah, it's a little more vague than that because – the fact that you and I are interested in the unknown and mysteries means that we are interested in kind of that blurry territory where, where things are not so clear and the contrasts are not so sharp. And so you have to sort of uh, think in terms of the fact that like – we're kind of blessed and cursed because people like us are blessed because we find a way of exploring the things that we're so curious about, but we're cursed because that um, we are always right there on, on the precipice of what is unknown. And as soon as it becomes known, well, we move on to the next thing that's unknown. So <laughs> we're in kind of an uncomfortable position, but uh, but it's a pleasure, honestly, to, to be here because if you're a truly curious person, you always want to know what is next, what's next, what's next. And that's what we're finding out as we uh, investigate these phenomena. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I, I totally agree with you that's why i called the station the fringe fm because people are saying well you know i've had guests come on and say i don't know if, if we consider this fringe anymore like it's real science and as soon as somebody tells me that i uh, actually do want to go well if it's not then we figured this out I, you're totally right i want to keep pushing out and figuring out what's going on uh but we are at the bottom of the break here or at the bottom of the hour and i wanted to man there's all kinds of stuff i want to talk to you about if you guys go to the website specifically is joshpwarren.com joshuapwarren.com you'll see some sigils on the front page there and i think that's probably what we're going to talk about as soon as we come back right after this break go check it out for reference join the fringe fm chat too we'll be right back Charlton from Metaphorical Archaeology. If you've ever had a traumatic paranormal experience, the effects of it may stay with you for years. Uh, who do you talk to? You can't go to conventional help. What we do is we use emotional freedom techniques or tapping to actually neutralize the effects of that event. Maybe when you tell the story now, your heart races and your palms get sweaty. You don't even want to think about it because you don't know how to neutralize that. That's what EFT tapping does. It neutralizes those emotions the circuit that that was recorded on is gone the energy flows freely and you're free of it and that's what emotional freedom is all about we offer this as a pro bono service but this is something that i offer because no one it seems is helping people with these experiences if you'd like to reach me it's really easy my cell phone is 214-995-3754 please leave a message i will get back to you as quickly as possible or you can email me barb.eft at gmail.com and EFT stands for emotional freedom techniques reach out to me it's confidential this works you won't believe the results hey this check is wrong I worked a holiday and seven hours of overtime not getting paid correctly is a real pain it could also hurt our boss if our company provides out of compliance checks that's right. Construction companies doing business with the government can get fined, or officials of the companies can go to jail if the checks aren't right. It's a law. The davis Bacon Act has 30 compliance issues for every check, but there is an easy way for construction companies to be in compliance. EMARS offers Compliant Client, a web-based system that finds and corrects all 30 of the possible out-of-compliance check issues. Users of Compliant Client report an 80% savings in time and money. Running a weekly payroll usually takes about five minutes. All 15,000 plus clients of EMARS have never had a legal compliance issue. Plus, they sleep better on check day. Contact EMARS at emarsinc.com or call 480-595-0466. All right, man, this is Crow 777 and you are listening to The Fringe FM. 
right, my old chiners. I know it's an ad break, but before you lot shoot off and make yourself a cup of Rosie Lee or whatever else it is you're going to sling down your Gregory Peck, you need to listen to me bubble. If, like me, you found your way to light in the void via a downloadable podcast, you might want to take a butcher's at the Fringe FM Wind and Kite. You won't, Adam and Eve, how many other shows there are or what they rabbit on about. Ancient history, conspiracy, the consciousness, the esoteric, the occult, metaphysics, parapolitical, ufology, technology and spirituality to name but a few. they got featured hosts like Ryan Gable, Jeremy Scott, Alex Exum, Tim Doyle, Cortana and Gigi, Susanna Ross, the Reverend John Polk, Michael Deacon and J.D. Lewis. You might find yourself listening to the thoughts and theories of the author of The Fish You Just Finished Reading. Or you could pick up the dog and bone, call in and tell everyone your own beliefs or experiences. So do me a favour. Before you put on the ansel or crack open a bottle of vino or roller joint, Go to the Fringe FM and see what you're missing. From a cave in the depths of your mind, it's Light in the Void with Joe Root. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you are interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-563. One for a consultation. Hey, I'm JM DeBoard, and when I want to talk about dreams, I look up my man Joe Root and his show, Lighting the Void. tonight joshuapwarren.com i will drop the links in the chat room you can join the fringe fm chat by going to the fringe.fm forward slash chat room you can also go to the website and click on the chat where it says chat room and it is a discord server so it's a community of probably the coolest people in this stuff here and we don't have to worry about you know being shadow banned and all that stuff by like facebook does but previously, before we took our break, you were talking about um, your statue and the Art Bell story with your statue, which, I mean, I'm registering Art Bell, Joshua, because, you know, like Rush Limbaugh, I'm not too big of a fan of political radio, but I think I think um, you got something there with that, with that uh, statue because I believe in this. And it's cool. When I go to your website, I scroll down, and the first thing that I see is magic sigils, where you have sigils talking about money, psychic sigils. So, you, how long have you been talking about stuff like this, by the way? Magic and manifestation, things like that. Have you always blended that with your, your presentations and your work? Yeah, actually, I have. Uh, because, to me, the, I know that there are people who get into this just because they're, they're thrill seekers or they mm-hmm. have some compulsion. But, for me, it has always been a very practical endeavor because I have thought, all right, if a ghost can sort of appear out of nowhere as this luminous, radiant being, where is the power supply for this? Where's the battery? And and, and if we can sort of tap into that, what can we do with it? And I, I love that quote by Charles Fort that you can measure a circle beginning anywhere. And so, in other words, I think that uh, you can get into this paranormal field by studying ghosts or UFOs or monsters or psychic phenomena or angels or demons or whatever. But ultimately, they're all kind of connected in a certain way. And if you really understand how these things are able to sort of 
appear and then disappear, well, then maybe there is some kind of a power supply there that you can tap into. And so um, my fascination with that led me uh, to, I guess, what you can call transducers in the typical electronics world. A transducer is something that takes one form of energy and transforms it into another form of energy. So, for example, in the, uh, gosh, I think it was the seven, the, the late 1700s, there was this German scientist named Ernst Schladny. And nice. he would take, yeah, he would take these big, thin plates of metal and he would sprinkle uh, sand or salt on them. And then he would take a violin bow and uh, he would run it down the side. And as the bow created this sound, well, you'd see the particles, the grains just shift and, s- and snap into all these amazing snowflake like patterns. And so we call that. Now, cymatics. And cymatics is, is actually an ancient Greek word that just basically means uh, vibration or, or, or form. And, and so what I began experimenting with was how to take a vibration and turn it into a physical representation. And, of course, nowadays you can take a speaker – play it underneath sand or water or a semi-solid solution like cornstarch and water. And and you can see that this is not just something that happens two-dimensionally. This stuff can raise up in all these three-dimensional ridges. So let's say, for example, you take a bowl of water and you put it over top of a speaker and you play a certain tone. You'll see uh, this sort of undulating three-dimensional form that appears in the water. It reminds you a little bit of the famous scene from Jurassic Park when you see the ripples every time oh, the right. dinosaur is yeah. pounding. For So I started becoming very curious about this because what we're doing here is we're taking something that's non-physical and we're turning it into something that is physical, you know, and, and so we're, we're transducing that energy. So I started doing experiments uh, up until two years ago. I lived, as I said, in the Bermuda Triangle. I actually lived in Boca Rico, Puerto Rico. Uh, so that's on the west, the southwest coast of Puerto Rico, which is opposite of San Juan, where most of your tourists and cruise ships and stuff go. Um, and so... I started uh, taking uh, seawater at first and and experimenting with creating forms in it. And one night I was sitting there uh, looking at these patterns that were forming with different tones. And I took out uh, an infrared light and I said, wow, uh, my wife is named Lauren, Lauren Warren. She sounds like she belongs in a comic book. You know, she's a reporter, Lauren Warren. I said to my wife, Lauren, look how how many details sort of you know really sort of pop when you have this infrared light and now let's use an ultraviolet light and now let's use a laser light we're seeing all these details and so i'm starting to see uh in- incredible vivid imagery coming from uh these tones and then i thought what if i go one step further and instead of just playing a tone what if i play a tone with a message hmm. and some people have thought maybe this was inspired a little bit by uh, masaru emoto who was a japanese researcher featured in the movie what the bleep do we know and i interviewed him on my radio program called speaking of strange right. he was a guy who would uh, look at how that language affected uh, ice uh, as it was forming. Yeah, he uh, sent he, the messages to the water of love and neglect to other ones to kind of see what would happen, right? Yeah, you would say, I love you or I hate you or whatever to water as it was freezing, and he would see different patterns. So I recorded some messages. And uh, so you know, I, I wrote a book called Use the Force, A Jedi's Guide to the Law of Attraction. I'm a big Star Wars nerd. And uh, so I've always been interested in how to sort of attract things. And I thought, okay, I'm going to record one message that says, well, I want to attract a ghost. And uh, now I'll record another message that says, I want to attract more money. 
And then I, so I went down this list of things that people are always wanting to attract. Well, <laughs> I say people are all, I don't think people are always wanting to attract a ghost. That's where I, <laughs> that's my weird little French. Thing. So anyway, the first thing I did was that night, um, Okay, after Lauren went to bed, I took a picture of uh, the thing that says, uh, well, I took a picture of the, the pattern that was formed with the message that I want to attract a ghost and converted that into an image. And I went up and just silently taped that on the door of the bedroom which I do not recommend that you do folks <laughs> if you want to keep your if you want to keep your marriage intact so so anyway uh, a few hours later cuz I'm one of these weirdos I got a strange schedule you know I'm up and down at all hours of the day yeah, and night me too man I understand yeah. that so Lauren comes down the stairs and she said were were you just in the bedroom I said no and she said well first I heard something moving and then something shoved me and I said, "Oh, really?" And then I informed <laughs> I informed her what I'd done, and uh, so I, she made me promise I would never do that again. And I said, "My goodness, this actually is working, you know." So I started taking these pictures of the form that the water was producing, and simplifying it, and and like you know, more like a line drawing, and putting it on my website. For free, you know, I'm not, I just, just, this is just an experiment. So, you know, I get on radio programs like Coast to Coast AM, and I would say, go to joshuapwarren.com, and you'll find these sigils there, which a sigil is a magical symbol. Take the sigil, um, look at it throughout the day, put it uh, as your wallpaper on your, your computer or your phone or print it out and stick it on your wall or whatever. It doesn't matter. Just look at it for, we'll say, 30 seconds at a time, three times a day. Well, the number one most popular one was the money sigil, of course. Right. Yeah. And the money sigil, I started getting so many unbelievable stories from people about how much money that they were making. I mean, it would be like surprising stuff like an inheritance or some check they didn't know they were owed or like there was at least one guy who actually hit the lotto. I mean, like all this kind of crazy stuff happens to such an extent that within a week people were sending me at least two people pictures of the tattoo they got of the money sigil. They got <laughs> pretty the smart. money sigil tattooed. <laughs> I mean, but but how crazy is that, that you can just throw out some kind of like abstract looking symbol on the Internet and it and it makes such an impact that a week later people are tattooing it on their bodies. So to this day, the sigils are free and you can go to Joshua P. Warren dot com and experiment with them yourself. But as far as like how and why they work, uh. I don't know, but my theory is that um, if we can take a vibration and turn it into an image, then that means being exposed to that image somehow can take you back to that vibration. It's like broadcasting, you know what I mean? Like a, a, an antenna that can transmit can also receive. It's it, it, it's it's all. This is all. Um, you can you can you can easily model all of this with broadcasting. So yeah. it may be that these these symbols are like antennas, and um, and so being exposed to that pattern takes you back to that thought and that intention. And so, as insane as all that sounds, uh, hopefully there is a little bit of uh, method to the madness in there. <laughs> I'm, you know, I'm often called the mad scientist of the paranormal. So there you have it, Joe. No, I mean, like I understand it and I understand it totally. Uh, I've practiced sigil magic several times myself and I like, this is what, this is what I've always said that I think what's going on and I can't explain it any other way than this and i talked to was, laird scranton was the first person i talked to about this it's like we live in this physical plane and this a vibration of this physical plane and then there's this spiritual astral plane whatever people want to call it mental uh, it doesn't matter to me and so if you look at it like a <clears throat> like a figure eight where that where the figure eights cross that's where you got to kind of get witchy and do weird stuff to trigger the subconscious and it's like 
the spirits or whatever they are on that other side of the figure eight go, oh, I know what he's saying. Let's whip that back around to him, right? Because you can't just communicate regularly. It has to be a, a subconscious mechanism for some reason. Well, yeah, I mean, if you want to make progress and, um, you know, of course, that's what we're all trying to do, uh, then you have to sort of take it outside the box a little bit. And, you know, you mentioned the figure eight. Uh, it's the symbol for infinity. And uh, that's also a very powerful, magical symbol. And a, a lot of people carry around a figure eight in their wallet to also attract money, which is one of the things that I do as well. And uh, of course, I don't know if, if you want to get into wishing machines tonight, but uh, wishing machines, I think, are like the ultimate example of taking these types of symbols and tuning them and transmitting them for like very fast results because um the way i look at it is you you know if i want to get from here to the gas station i can walk and yeah i'll eventually get there mm -hmm. i can ride a bike i'll get there faster or i can get in a car and i'll get there even faster and so you can just look at, at symbols and and sigils and you can if you can maintain your focus you can get to where you want to want to go, but if you have a wishing machine, you know these types of radionic devices, the real ones, not the the ones that. Be, I mean, there are some very very crazy people out there who don't make any sense whatsoever, who are saying, "Oh, this is a wishing machine." But if you get an actual wishing machine. Uh, then you can tune and hone your intention and it will keep you on track almost like a GPS meter keeps you or a GPS device keeps you on track as you're traveling and um, and therefore I believe that you can really hone and uh, you, you can you can be very precise about getting where you want to go and so that's why I use um, these wishing machine devices all the time uh, I've been doing this for almost 20 years and uh honestly uh, i think i'm a pretty good living example of why you should do that because i have been able to do very well for myself in an extremely weird and unconventional field <laughs> yeah well you know i mean that's to me is it's like a dream life actually to me to be able to travel around do radio get paid to investigate stuff so what that means is that means that you're good at what you do. So let's take uh, the Brown Mountain Lights, for example. Uh, that you're like the go-to guy for that, right? In a lot of in a lot of sense. Most here's what I really wanted to ask you about because I'll just jump ahead and, and not tell the backstory. But a lot of people have been having these uh, experiences with uh, orange orbs. It's like the most orange or amberish colored orbs. It's like the most common UFO ever seen, and I've had them too. But I did watch a presentation with you back in the day where you were talking about, I believe this is plasma, some type of energy or ball lightning. Do you still believe that about these these things? By the way, just curious. Yeah, I think that the quote-unquote brown mountain lights are manifesting as a version of plasma. And what that means is I'm talking about a particular state of matter. So just to, to refresh everybody, let's take water, for example. So water in a solid state is what we would call an ice cube because the molecules are very tightly fixed into place. You add a little more energy to that in, in the form of heat or whatever, well, they loosen up some, and now it turns into a, a liquid. And you add a little more energy to that, and it loosens up even more, and it turns into a gas, steam. But at that point, if you add even more energy to it, something almost magical happens, and it transforms from a gas, i.e. steam, into this fourth state of matter called plasma. And at that point, one or more electrons are pulled out of every atom. And so now you have this luminous, unstable uh, form of matter that is composed of free-floating electrons and these atoms that now have a positive charge because they're missing an electron. And even though that sounds crazy, I mean, that's what a candle flame is. That's what a lightning bolt is. That's what you see when you look at the sun. 
Um, and so this form of matter is the form in which the brown mountain lights tend to appear. However, that said, even though I have my own ideas about how the brown mountain lights are are being mechanically created, um, I do not think that that in any way explains all of the phantasmagoria of strange phenomena reported around Brown Mountain because you have people who are seeing ghosts, who are who are seeing UFOs and claiming to be abducted by UFOs, having time slips, um, monsters and cryptids running all over the place. And so to me, it seems like if you have a spot on Earth that is naturally uh, a great conductor or conduit for all of this kind of electrical energy, then you end up with a spot where a lot of strange stuff is happening and the lights are just one byproduct of that, a very visible apparent byproduct of that. So there's a lot going on there and uh, but the lights are the those are the things that get your attention first. Gotcha. Okay. So th- what about the, what about how they move though? Does that matter? Like sometimes I've seen these things move fast. I've seen them hover and I've also seen them like zigzag. Does that, do you take that into account as far as the energy goes or do you think, well, that's just still energy and moving erratically, possibly something like that? Well, yeah, I mean, it's, it's basically, it's similar to ball lightning in a way. Uh, and I'm not saying that that means that it's not got a consciousness attached because there may be a consciousness attached i can't tell you how many people i've talked to who have said that they feel that way but i'll I'll give you some examples and i know we're getting close to break time here but um there was a guy named tommy hunter in 1982 who was standing on the brown mountain overlook with nine other witnesses he's dead now but i got to interview him and interview some of the witnesses who also confirmed that He saw this ball of light that was about three times the size of a basketball uh, come floating up onto the overlook from the ravine below. And everybody was running away from it, and he was the one crazy guy who was walking over toward it. That would be me. Uh, And so he he walked over and, uh, and touched it. The only guy I ever talked to that I believed who said he touched a brown mountain light. And as soon as he did that, he said it felt like he'd stuck his finger in a light socket or touched a spark plug. It rattled his teeth. It shocked the heck out of him. And I think he almost passed out because everybody said he pretty much went to the ground. And he didn't, you know, he he might have been out of it for like 10 seconds or whatever. But he he did. And and everybody who who saw this said the light discharged a little bit. Like, for example, it, it dimmed a little. But as soon as he wasn't touching it, it brightened back up. It did not completely discharge and so it continued meandering off through the woods so what that means to me looking at this from a more scientific point of view is that this is definitely something that has a strong electrical component but if you touch something like that that was purely um a part of the capacitance of the mountain that light would have dispersed and discharged instantly and been gone so there's something very special about it um but i think these balls of light have the ability to sort of hover around the mountain in in various ways and you know you and i are both physical but so is the desk uh, so is the car, you know, so is the cup of coffee. So just because we're both, you know, we're all physical doesn't mean we're the same thing. So some of these lights may be composed of plasma that is uh, conscious and some, uh, well, some of these plasmas are not conscious. And so um, that's sort of the gist of where we have this mystery, you know, of how to discern one from the other. Interesting. I See, you and my mind work a lot of the same, too. I, you have to consider both sides of this. You have to consider the science. You have to consider the spirituality. You have to consider all of it. I mean, you, you got to I'm not saying just stay in the gray area, but I think uh, people get polar when they look at this situation or they get into what's called. I'm sure you're familiar with confirmation bias. So they want to study it and say, well, it's an alien. And then they only look around, kind of study it 
in that way that proves that it's an alien without looking at everything. But I think what you stated earlier about there might be a consciousness to it. It's kind of like the same thing with the statues and stuff, right? You know, I mean, it's, we don't really understand consciousness. Nobody does. The, the neuroscientists and neurologists, they think they do kind of, but they really don't. And that is the biggest question. Like what is consciousness? That's a huge question. Well, you know, Joe, I, um, I have this daily podcast called Joshua P. Warren Daily, and I used to try to do it every day, and now it's getting harder and harder, but uh, and sometimes it's five minutes, and sometimes it's two hours, where I just kind of update people on my research. And I recently read a story uh, about some scientists who were speculating that everything in the universe has some level of feeling. So, uh, which takes us back to all, some of the Native American philosophy that we hear about, that a, a rock has some level of feeling and perception uh, just as much as, you know, maybe a, a plant or a rabbit or whatever. And I, I've, I've reached the point where I, I believe that everything has some degree of feeling and therefore some degree of consciousness, which is one of the reasons that I think that there is an afterlife. You're not going to die and just be gone. Uh, energy can be neither created nor destroyed, simply transferred from one form to another. And so therefore, everything that we're dealing with has some degree of consciousness, some spirit. And, uh, you know, you can try to break it down and put it under a microscope if you want, but uh, that is why if you approach the world with that attitude, with that level of understanding, suddenly uh, the universe starts speaking to you and communicating with you in a new way. Indeed. It's done that. AI. We have discussed that very topic several times on this show, and we are already at the top of the hour believe it or not joshua p warren our guest tonight go check out the website joshua p warren.com you can also call in when we come back it's 1-800-588-0335 if you want to ask any questions stay with us we'll be right back after this The Fringe FM. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app free in google play and the ios app store hey this is no way jose a northern california piscean stuck in the arizona desert i'm a void walker and i got the shoes to prove it so what do i do when my soul yearns to delve deep into the realm of the unknown i aim my satellite straight into the night sky and catch a smooth ride on the ktlk db radio waves i tune into lighting the void with joe root on the french fm Joe, Lighting the Void is the best show on the planet. This is Barney, your friend from Facebook. Thank you and all the crew for all you do. Namaste, my friend. This is Macon from the Foothills, North Carolina, and I am a void walker. G'day, void walkers. This is Lily from Down Under Australia. The world may be small, but the enigma is greater. So let your curiosity take you for a journey with Joe Root. Hey, this is V, coming in from Central Maryland. And I am a void walker. This is Kevin Darkity, a beginner void walker. I'm from Vancouver, BC. I know a little about a lot, and you know, as Leonard Skinner said, I guess the rest. I learned a lot from uh, Mr. Root and the show. I you know, heard it from the beginning. I knew right then he was going to be a new art bell. Thanks for all your uh, shows and keep it up. Hey, this is Derek from Mass, aka the Night Stalker, and I'm a void walker. This is Mark from Chicago, and I walk the void to ascertain what is consciousness. My name is Jared Johnson, and I'm from Humboldt County, California. I do not know all the answers to the questions about reality, 
I do not claim to know the ultimate truth about life. I seek that which has been made hidden as a part of a family of explorers of consciousness. I'm a void walker. Thanks, Joe Root. I'm Clyde Lewis. You are listening to The Fringe FM. Is that a new music app? Yeah, check it out. Surfer Music Discovery. It links to thousands of online stations, but the twist is you see the song names and artists that are now playing live. That's different. No guessing. Looks like a waterfall of music. So many formats. Rock, oldies, country, R&B, jazz, and a whole lot more. How's that spelled? Surfer. S-U-R-F-R. Is it expensive? It's free. No need to sign up or sign in. Get the Surfer Music app free from Google Play or the App Store. Have you ever seen an ad or banner which brought you a feeling that someone is reading your mind or even listening to your conversations? Your online data is being used against you. Surfshark is a VPN service that makes online privacy protection easy and attainable. You can use it on as many devices as you'd like simultaneously. Surfshark encrypts all internet traffic sent to and from your devices and ensures that your IP address remains hidden. The VPN service that we use at UFO Seekers plus one month free for $1.99 a month. Visit surfshark.deals slash seekers. We all have that story to tell in our lives. The winds were howling. The ground shook. You could hear rushing water. And then history repeats itself. When there's no power, refrigeration fails. Stores with their shelves stripped bare. ATMs can't operate. Deliveries stop. Then what? These events can last days or weeks. You need a plan. In statements made during recent interviews, FEMA Administrator Brock Long has repeatedly urged all Americans to understand three truths. FEMA is broke. The system is broken. If this is the new normal, Americans can't rely on federal cavalry when disaster strikes. Don't get caught out in the elements empty-handed. Prepare with us by going to preparewiththefriends.com and get your two-week food supply, 92 servings, eight food varieties with 25-year shelf life, normally $137, now only $75. Or get a month supply, normally $247, now only $147 shipped in one business day. Just go to preparewiththefriends.com or call 888-440-7931. That's 888-440-7931. Get this great offer and be prepared while it lasts. Hey, Fringe listeners, this is Dave Cruz, host of Beyond the Strange Radio, asking you to join us live Sunday evenings at 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on The Fringe FM. Visit beyondstrange.com for links to chat, social media, and schedules of the show. And remember, always stay strange. Hasta. Somewhere between abnormal and paranormal, there's a show called Into the Paranormal. I'm Jeremy Scott. Hear me live Saturdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 Eastern on the Fringe FM. We can stroll to all the newspapers and the television. What's happening, Fringe family? This is the Nice Stalker News with your update on the world of weird and all things Fringe. Release the Kraken. Scientists at the University of Copenhagen have recently sequenced the entire genome of the elusive giant squid. According to SciTechDaily.com, the research group managed to get a hold of a freshly frozen tissue sample of a giant squid collected by a fishing vessel near New Zealand. An incredible stroke of luck, according to the research leader. This discovery will help scientists better understand things like what makes the giant squid grow as large as it does without having to go out there and actually harpoon the mythical beast. In the words of Graham Hancock, stuff just keeps getting older, and in this case, smarter. According to a new study, ancient Mongolian kingdoms have actually been more sophisticated than previously believed. Mongolia's past empires have been long betrayed as groups of violent horseback riders thought to be exceptions to the established rules of what makes an empire, according to Shevin Wilkin from the Max Planck Institute in Germany. This paradigm is being reconsidered after a paper presented in the Journal of Scientific Reports shows evidence that their diets relied extensively on millet, a type of small seeded grass which indicates more complex economies that developed in part because they were able to maintain reliable food surpluses. The famous Maui statues of Easter Island have always been a source of mystery and intrigue. According to CNN, a Chilean island resident was arrested on Sunday after his truck crashed into one of the stone figures and badly damaged it. The damage is incalculable. According to Camilo Rapu, president of Easter Island's indigenous Rapa Nui community. Going further, the island's mayor has called for tougher restrictions on driving around statues. 
KLTV Channel 10 Texas reports that a mother and daughter were recently arrested for voodoo and witchcraft after stalking the daughter's ex-husband. I just want to take the opportunity to remind everyone that this is a stalking with an ALK and not an OCK, as in Night Stalker. Just thought I'd throw that out there. Fagan used pictures of the victim, a woman who previously had dated Fagan's ex-husband, to make objects related to voodoo, witchcraft, and Satanism to cause her to feel harassed, annoyed, alarmed, abused, tormented, embarrassed, or offended. Some of the items were a picture of a red pentagram cross with her face in the middle, a burned blue candle beside the picture, a pair of black male boxer shorts with a note saying, a mason jar filled with sand, a small voodoo doll with pins in its head, face, and heart, a burned blue candle, and symbols or sigils representing horror, death, pain, insanity, delusion, and destruction. The mason jar was covered in these sigils and left on the victim's vehicle on September 13th, 2019. And in case you're wondering, yes, that was Friday the 13th. Spooky. I'm sorry to have to report that horror and sci-fi legend Max von Sydow has passed away on Sunday at the age of 90. Von Sydow was actually born Carl Adolf von Sydow in Sweden. He began his career on stage before transitioning into an incredibly legendary Oscar-nominated career on the big screen. Some more positive news. We have another reason to love Mark Hamill. According to ComicSans.com, 11-year-old Star Wars fan and amputee has received an R2-D2 bionic limb in a phone call from Luke Skywalker himself. Bella Tadlock from Tallahassee, Florida raised almost $14,000 for a bionic hero arm created by Bristol Company Open Bionics. Tadlock is the first person in the United States to receive the R2-D2 style bionic arm. As Star Wars fans know, Luke Skywalker has his own bionic arm. So Hamill is uniquely qualified to answer any questions that Bella might have. Signing off until next time, I'm the Night Stalker, and you've been listening to the Night Stalker News only on the Fringe FM. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. Don't forget after the show tonight, The Secret Teachings with Ryan Gable will be on. Also, uh, this this coming event that we're going to at the Ozarks, I think we're going to be giving away some stuff, too. There's going to be a raffle there, a speaker's dinner, stuff like that, April the 10th through the 12th. As long as everything is cool and copacetic, I'm hoping that everything stays that way. I mean, obviously, I'm from Arkansas, so I can drive there, but... Uh, travel is kind of getting weary for people. You know, Josh, uh, Joshua, I don't, uh, is it okay if I call you Josh? Josh, I didn't even ask you that, right? That, that, that oh, was no, oh, that, oh, that's fine. Yeah, I respond to just about anything. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you. So, um, so this, this coronavirus thing, we've been talking about this all week. Everybody has. And last night, Jay Layton was on the program. And now I'm talking to you about energy and magic and manifestation. And what I've come to know about this type of stuff is, yeah, every year there's something that they scare us with. It's been that way since before 2000. There's something that they scare us with. There's something to be afraid of. However, you probably know because you've studied the esoteric and the occult what fear kind of does to things, right? I mean, even in the paranormal, you know, when you get a haunting or you're worried about a ghost, you, you ever see how, like, when people get afraid, it kind of kicks up the activity, right? So, yeah. I think yeah. it could be that way with what's going on now out in the, you know, with this virus stuff. What do you think? I think it is so ridiculously blown out of proportion that I just recently uh, recorded a whole podcast called The Coronavirus is BS. And, and, and what I meant by that was the, the media hype about this is. And one of the reasons that I like doing my podcast independently is I don't take sponsors. I don't take advertisers. Um, I every, almost every day somebody contacts me and wants to advertise or sponsor. And I say, no, thank you. But no, thank you. I won't do it. I won't do it. Um, you know, we were talking a little bit off the air about the years that I spent in professional radio and how annoyed I was by the FCC. And I am taking full advantage of my independence uh, right now with with podcasting and i don't even know if that's going to last forever you know there are always people who are trying to figure out how to get their finger in the pie so what i will tell you as a guy who does not take any money from sponsors or advertisers of any kind is that 
uh, given my background once working in news media and all that, you have to understand that um, if quote unquote free media is, is generated by sponsors and sponsors are trying to sell you something. And the way they convince you to buy something is by telling you you have a problem and they can solve right. it. That's, yep. that's what it's all about. Or, or telling you you're not good enough or, you know, you could, here's how you up your class in life or your status in life. And so <clears throat> it, is be, it is based upon making people feel negative. That's the whole thing. Like news media, not all media, but news media is based upon making you feel negative. And it goes back to Darwinism. The reason that you have this sense that uh, you should pay attention to something is because, oh, this is going to protect you. I mean, if I tell you right now, Joe, everything's going to be fine, brother. Just relax, chill out, take a deep breath. You might even close your eyes, you know. But if I say, Joe, oh, my God, you're about to get hit by the – I mean, like all of a sudden, every sense that you have – goes up, you know, on alert, right. your hair stands on up in the back of your neck, and now I've got your attention, and and you are your attention. You are your attention. And and so they are they're they they abuse that. The news media abuses that now. And the reason that I say that I think that the coronavirus is so disproportionately represented is because um, like you don't have to take my word for it. I don't have the stats right in front of me, but uh, I know that basically like a hundred thousand people have gotten this in the whole world, and just since October, uh, about thirty million people have gotten the flu, just the standard flu, just in the United States. Uh, I, I, I think you know somewhere around three thousand people in the world have died from the coronavirus, and there have been about 30,000 people in the U.S. who've died from the standard flu. And so the thing is, we hear about the flu every year, and so that's not sensational anymore. It kind of rolls off your back, you know, mm -hmm. water off the duck. And so they have to come up with something new to punch it up, to make it scarier. To, and, uh, and, and one of the reasons that I'm really speaking out against this hype is that it's doing some real damage because you're panicking people and that is not good i mean that, that i think that is horrible you know you see the stock market falling you see people canceling trips you see people freaking out uh, i read today they're not even going to have a live audience at jeopardy and will of fortune anymore <laughs> and so it also kind of gives people an excuse though to just be lazy i believe um and, and have you noticed, Joe, that, uh, that when you watch the news, they say, oh, my God, it's gotten so bad, they're actually cleaning the stuff that you touch on an airplane now. And I thought, well, weren't they always doing that? <laughs> like, <laughs> so that might be the good thing that comes from this. We're, we're actually finally cleaning stuff that we should have been cleaning all along. Um, but so my point is, yes, it's a virus. It will get bigger. But – the media hysteria is so disproportionate that it's reached the point that it uh, it offends me because I believe you are inciting unnecessary panic so that when something actually happens, because eventually there will be a real pandemic like the Spanish influenza from 1918, when something real happens – then people are going to feel like, you know, it's, it's the boy who cried wolf sort of thing, and they're not going to believe it. But just go do your own research, look at the stats, and hey, like they say, wash your hands, don't touch your face, you know, drink your vitamin C, and that's about all you can do. Otherwise, why freak people out like this? It's absurd. Yeah, all you can do is what you can do, right? That's all you can do. And if if you stay positive, I mean, you seem like a really energetic, positive guy, Think about how that works out for you. Think about how that works for your health. We were even talking uh, last night, and you're talking about this now too, especially even on, I think a little bit more scientifically as well here, that our body's made up of all these cells that, you know, we can vibrate whatever. We can change things. It's been documented. People have done that. Change their entire body with the mind. They don't understand the placebo effect. They don't understand why that happens. We just know that it happens. And again, I go back to this. Like, I really believe not, you know, 
that there's something on the other side of what we consider the subconscious and young talks about the subconscious, but I don't, I don't even think we understand that. Right. But we, we are starting to understand frequencies and energies a little bit better. And maybe Josh, I mean, maybe you were just ahead of your time when you started talking about all this now, cause doesn't it seem like, don't you ever feel like I told you so I've been talking about this forever. You know, now everybody's kind of into it kind of thing, you know? Well, it is funny when you look back and you see philosophers, theologists, uh, ascended masters of various cultures throughout history who have been talking about the same things that now uh, modern physicists are gradually confirming. And what you find is that uh People who were into mysticism and metaphysics and all that stuff hundreds or thousands of years ago, um, they they may have seemed like they were sorcerers or magicians, but as we now know, as Arthur C. Clarke said, that uh, a sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. And so we're now just looking at it from the other point of view. And so you, when you have these scientists who are saying, okay, well, we are creating quantum computers, we're on the verge of teleportation, we can edit the genetic code, uh, we have got uh, you know, every reason to believe that we are going to be able to manipulate the world uh, from some kind of a, a holographic yet scientific perspective. It shows you that what we're really doing now is saying, okay, the stuff they were talking about maybe from a more – uh, right brain perspective is now being embraced by the left brain perspective, and that says a lot about mm. who who we are as a culture. Um, but but yes, I mean um, there you, you can't help but have this sort of "I told you so" kind of mindset sometimes. But here, here I'll give you a quick example of this. For years, I was talking about how the Brown Mountain Lights were real. You know, as soon as I was 16 years old and got my driver's license. I was driving to Brown Mountain, which was less than an hour from my house, and camping up there and getting permits from the Forest Service and taking all these scientists with me, a rocket scientist, a physicist from Oak Ridge, um, an astronomer, like all these different people. And yet there was this you know, one uh, scientist, quote-unquote scientist, at a, a nearby university – who they would always sort of pit me against in the media. And it'd be like, here is the guy, the local boy, who says that, you know, he's documenting these lights. But here is this guy who's the scientist who says that he doesn't see any evidence for these. And uh, then finally, guess what? The scientist got his own footage. He finally documented them. And now all of a sudden... They're real. Now they're being taken seriously because he got the, you know, the same footage that I've been talking about, that my team and I have captured, that, I, that people have been talking about for hundreds of years. And so, the, again, it goes back to the blessing and the curse. So the blessing is that when you do this stuff, you get to be right there on the cusp of what's new and yet to be explored. But as soon as you actually find that what you've been talking about is true, then the real scientists step in and say, we'll take it from here, boys. In a, and, uh, and you just sort of vanish into the background and go on to your next wacky project. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good man. That's a good strategy. I have to. T I have to start doing that too, right? <laughs> that's what I need to do instead of worrying about everything, right? Just do your next wacky project. Like here's the th here's what I I wanted to go back to because we just kind of brushed over it. The wishing machine, right? That was a big thing yeah. for you, and you got this title. It's almost like circus, like the wishing machine. But tell me how this thing really works, though, because there's something yeah. real to it. Oh yeah, yeah. It, you know, it, it's it's a great catchy name. And um, okay, so the wishing machine is a technology, and I really believe it is a technology that has been around for um, over one hundred years, invented by a very distinguished medical doctor uh, named Albert Abrams, and. 
It's essentially a box that has an input plate where you represent what it is you want to happen and an output plate, and you use the output plate to tune it on a variety of knobs. And as silly and ridiculous as that may sound, for some reason, it actually works. And I, you know, I'm, I'm one of those guys that uh, I just love to experiment with things. And so I, I bought my first wishing machine probably around 20 years ago. And at that time, um, I, I just thought, okay, if this is if this doesn't work, then it's just a weird thing that I'll have in my collection. But it turns out it did work. And it works so well that it is now a staple of my daily life. So that's why I say, you know, I uh, I don't want to sound like I'm bragging here, but I've been self-employed since I was 18 years old. I've been with the same woman, Lauren, my beloved wife, for 23 years um, I do what I love for my work. I mean, I travel all around the world and I get to investigate amazing things. Um, I've been on all these TV shows and published all these books and I could go on. But again, I'm not trying to impress you, but to impress upon you that I believe that one of the reasons I've been able to do this is because I use wishing machines. But I can give you very specific examples of how they have worked for me. Uh, before I get into that, though, let me just give you like my latest rundown on, on how I think these might work, okay? All right. So, all right, so um, if, if, if you have a room, big empty room, that has two pianos in it, and uh, two identical pianos, and a guy walks into that room, and he bangs a chord on one piano, the other piano will play that same chord even though he doesn't go near it. Uh, you can see examples of this if you just go to YouTube and you look up, you know, people do it with tuning forks. I've seen it done with guitars. It's called sympathetic resonance. So what that means is when you send a vibration out there, and this is connected to the cymatics conversation that we were having, which of course I now call parasymatics, but anyway, the idea is that when you send a vibration out there, that it activates a corresponding vibration that comes back to you. And so that is my best theory on like how these things work. That like right now I can have a very positive intention for something wonderful to happen, and then I say, Oh, what am I gonna have for dinner in an hour, you know, or what you know what and, and, and I, my my thoughts change. I think these machines are able to somehow store and continue transmitting your your desire. Uh, and as a matter of fact, speaking of YouTube, if you go there and you uh, just do a search for Wish Masters, that's a short film that I made, um, I guess a couple years ago. Uh, Wish Masters and radionics and wishing machines, you'll see. Or you can, I think you can go to wishmastersmovie.com and, and watch this and, uh, and get a little more info on it. So... I'll just give you some quick examples, though, uh, of, of how I have used this. So in February of um, – oh, gosh, I forget the year. But anyway, it was February. I was in the mountains of West North Carolina. We have the highest mountains east of the, of the Mississippi, Mount Mitchell. And we got a blizzard, and I was not well prepared for the blizzard. And I'm sitting there freezing – and the power was out for a week, and I said, okay, I've had enough of this. I want to have a place to spend my winters. So I got on my computer, and I just did a search for tropical beaches. And I printed out the first attractive picture that I saw. I put it on the wishing machine. Less than a week later, I got an email from a guy in Puerto Rico who said, hey, I've got some strange activity down here in Puerto Rico. I'd like to pay you and pay for your trip and fly you down here to Puerto Rico. So I flew to Puerto Rico. <laughs> Didn't have to ask me twice. And while I was down there, I met a real estate agent, and she took me to this condo right next to this beautiful beach. And I was like, yeah, I'll take it. So anyway, I came back to North Carolina, 
and I and I saw the wishing machine. I said, "Man, that thing really worked for me." And so then I went back and I found the picture that I had put on the machine. And guess what? That was a picture of the beach there at Bocaron, Puerto Rico. Of all the tropical beaches in the world, even unknown to me, I had printed out a picture of the actual beach where I would get my new vacation home. And that that's just the first story. I know your, we're up on a break. Your new so, vacation home. Yeah, so so I've got another story to tell you when we come back from the break. But that was that I I love that one because I didn't even know that it was going to be that beach, and some something in the universe knew that was going to be the place. Yeah, see, so you know what I'm talking about. Then these kind of things just uh, they just kind of line up right for you sometimes. Synchronicity start picking up the more that you. So, I mean, real quick before we do take the break, the more that you were doing what you felt like you needed to do in life. Did it did it seem like that spirit or synchronicity or whatever just kept happening more and more? Because I feel like that sometimes when I know I'm going in the right direction, almost like it's a, a compass for me to keep going that way. The universe is constantly trying to speak to you, but it doesn't speak English. It speaks to you through signs and symbols and connections. And if you understand how to read that language, the universe will tell you every single day, where to go and when you meet a person it will tell you is this a good person or a bad person when you think of a situation it will tell you is this a good situation or a bad situation it's binary it's like an amoeba amoebas don't have a brain they don't have a skeletal system but you put them in water they know is this good water for me or bad water for me and so uh you start to just sort of like glide through life because uh, suddenly you start paying attention to what life has been, has been trying to tell you all along. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. And, and it's, it's almost like if uh, I mentioned this last night too, it almost feels like you're being rewarded uh, for it. Like, yeah, Hey, now you're listening to us. So here's this thing, but a vacation home on a beach and you knew that was going to be your new vacation home. Do you mean like you, you knew it was, was it a coincidence? Oh, we can talk about that, right? We'll just talk about that when we come back, like you said, because I want to hear the story. Stuff like that, life-changing events especially, are huge for me. We'll be right back with Joshua P. Warren right after these quick messages. Stay with us. This is Rev. Dan Lopez from Spiritual Warrior Today Radio, and you're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Hi, this is David Oman with House at the End of the Drive.com. You're listening to KTLK, The Fringe FM. Do you want to know the truth? Are UFOs real? Are aliens visiting Earth? Are governments around the world hiding the biggest secret in history? We're UFO Seekers, official partner of The Fringe FM, and we're on a hunt for the truth. Join us as we investigate locations like Area 51 by subscribing on YouTube at youtube.com slash UFO Seekers. 
pandemic is hitting our country through fear of catching a cruddy virus. Face masks, antibacterial soap, water, toilet paper being purchased in mass quantities. If you want your immunity up, I call it our shields, you need Allison Advanced. One pill is equal to 35 cloves of garlic and you won't smell like garlic and it won't leave you with bad breath. So 35 cloves of garlic in one pill? Yes, shields up. And when your shields are up, you're safe. Enjoy the confidence of not having fear of a cruddy virus. So here's how to order. Log on to getthetea.com. That's getthetea.com. Front page, scroll down. It'll say Big Al and Super Tea for savings. Or click on the immune and find Allison Advanced. Our tea does a wonderful job too, just to let you know. And for added benefits, take your blood pressure reads and watch Allison Advanced love on your blood pressure. Shields up. Get the tea. Com. That's get the tea.com. Hi, this is Chronox from Belgium, and you're listening to Lighting the Void with Joe Roop. Hey, friends, FM listeners, did you know that when you're on the road with limited data or no Wi Fi available, you can still listen to every minute of the Fringe FM by calling 701 719 3971. No smartphone, app, or internet needed. Saves your data plan and no extra cost if you have unlimited minutes. Call 701 719 3971. That's 701 719 3971. Listen to the Fringe FM on any phone, anytime, any where Alex Exum. Exum. This is Alex Exum of the Exum Experience and Live Talk, where we discuss current events, society, and culture. My shows are based in actuality, actual existence, contrasted with what was intended, expected, or believed. You can listen to me live Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays at 7 p.m. only on KTLK, The Fringe FM. Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation, and Angioprim is the result. A safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or to speak with a trained consultant, give Angioprim a call at 954-882-7221. That's 954-882-7221. This is Reverend John M. Polk, and you are listening to KTLK Digital Broadcasting right here on the Fringe.fm. Welcome back to Lighting the Void. Joshua P. Warren is our guest tonight. JoshuaPWarren.com. That's the website you want to go to. And he's also doing a conference. This is going to be his last conference that he's ever going to do. Uh, and, yeah, you know what? I don't want to say, I usually save that till the end of the show. But if this is your last one, I think we should discuss that. Because, um, yeah, I'm just curious. Why are you kind of retiring from the speaking and presenting? You just done with it? Or you got big plans? Or what's going on, brother? Well, well, it's a combination of things, and thank you for asking, Joe. You know, I started producing big conferences when I was in my early 20s, and I'm talking like at the the Grove Park Inn Resort and Spa, which is, you know, the big five-star place in in North Carolina where, um, like, if the president goes to North Carolina, he stays at the Grove Park Inn, or – uh, you know, I've done uh, expeditions all over the world. I've done cruises. I mean, I've done that stuff now for a good 20 years, and it's so 
time consuming and I have to commit myself to certain dates and stuff. And so I, I've been sort of waiting for a while to see when am I going to finally say, all right, folks, I'm not doing this anymore. It's because uh, I don't have to, it's just too much work. <laughs> I don't have to do that. And, and then also I signed a big contract last month for a new project that I'm not allowed to talk about yet, but it's, it's putting me in a very responsible role. It's related to the TV biz. And so I, I pretty much have decided that uh, this, this is going to be it for me as far as conferences. Now, I'm not saying I won't ever do another speaking engagement or something like that, but this is going to be my, my last conference. And my conferences are really special, you know, because you, you're talking about a situation where I'm in charge and I, I really care about transforming people's lives. I, I want to... I want you to come and then go back home and say, I'm a different person now. And now I know how to hack reality. So here's an example of what I'm saying. Uh, I'm a very vivid dreamer. And I mean, I dream every single night. And uh, of course, sometimes you can control your dream. And we call that a lucid dream. Right. Yeah. And, and I came to the conclusion that this life is just another form of a dream and that if you become lucid in this form, you will be amazed at how much you can control. So I call this event finding your magic, how to hack reality through lucid living. And I did this one, like the, the original one was, uh, it was on the Vegas strip uh, in May of 2018, and we had a sold-out crowd, people from all over the world. It was at the MGM Excalibur. Everybody loved it. And I said, okay, I'm going to do one more of these, except this one is going to be even better. And so May 29th and 30th of this year will be Finding Your Magic 2. And I know that people think I'm just a good showman when I say this is my last conference. But no, I'm serious. I'm, uh, anybody who knows me really will, will know that I don't go back on my word. I'm being serious. This is my last conference. I just don't have the time to keep producing stuff like this. So if you are interested – in being there, only 99 tickets are going to be sold. And as, as a matter of fact, I don't even know if there are any left. Uh, but if you go to youwillmanifest.com, youwillmanifest.com, at the, at the top is a link there to the event. And not only is Dr. Mulder going to be there, who is the reclusive maker of the wishing machines, but I'm also bringing out Carville the alien that night and I'm putting him on public display. He's in my living room right now. I'm taking him out on May 29th, the first night when we have our big meet and greet and our d'oeuvres and all that stuff. And, uh, and I'm going to have Carvel there. So everybody gets to see rush Limbaugh's and art bells aliens. So anyway, for all the details, if you go to, you will manifest.com again, click that link at the very top. And there's a little video of me saying like, Here's what is going to happen, and uh, this is why it's going to be my last one. But um, it's just, you know, I don't want to uh, – right now, I'm enjoying my life, and I just kind of want to say uh, I have done great conferences for 20 years, and I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. You know what I mean? Yeah, I get it. I mean, because there's probably other things you want to do in life. Like, here's, here's what I think that I've, I've kind of started figuring out, like we got this program running in our head. Uh, Josh is like, this is too good to be true. You know, you've heard that before, right? We, oh, yeah, we sure. all know that feeling when things like that happen in our life. And we don't really think that, you know, it's too good to be true. It's not going to last. Everything's going to go downhill. And I think that is the worst, worst program that you can be, that can run in your head because if you look around, there are people that live extravagant lives, extravagant lives that have good things and doesn't make them bad people. They might have just actually figured out that they need to stop thinking like that, putting their emotions and stop broadcasting that signal and try something else, you know? 
Well, you make an excellent point there, Joe, and you're right, because what is the difference between you and me and somebody who is, you know, walking on the moon or, or has a uh, three mansions or whatever, you know, like, and, and that's one of the great things. Like there are so many resources on this planet. There's enough for everybody to make their dreams come true because we don't yeah. all want the same thing. That's right. We want different things. And so getting back, you know, j just to sort of wrap up what we were talking about before the break, uh, once I was down in Puerto Rico, um, I got an email from a guy in Canada who bought one of the wishing machines. And by the way, if anybody out there is interested in a wishing machine, there's a ton of free educational content if you just go to wishingmachineproject.com ton of free educational content you have videos with me and other people talking all about it audio testimonials all that stuff at wishingmachineproject.com so anyway this guy in canada he contacted me and he said i like to go out as my hobby and use a metal detector and he said i got a wishing machine and I decided that I would look uh, – he said I wanted to find something gold with diamonds. He said I never found anything in my life that was made of gold with diamonds. And he said as it turns out, I wasn't able to go metal detecting that day when I was scheduling it. But lo and behold, I'm walking down the street and I look down and what do I find? A gold bracelet with diamonds in it. So I was uh, inspired by this, and I thought, well, that's interesting. I've never tried that before. So I got out one of my wishing machines because I have at least 10, 15 of these working on different things. And so I, I did the same thing. I said, I want to find something gold made with diamonds and just set that up in the background. Well, um, probably, I don't know. Again, we're looking at less than a week later. My sister, Jessica, she came down to Puerto Rico for the first time to visit me and Lauren. And I, uh, whenever people would come down to Puerto Rico, I would always take them to this little place called Gilligan's Island, uh, which it's, you know, you have to take a little boat to get over there. But when you get there, to this tiny little island, there's nothing commercial on it. And it's just like a big natural swimming pool. I mean, just crystal clear aquamarine water like 80 degrees it's yeah. it's like a, it's paradise right mm -hmm. so we went over there on a monday so here i am with my wife lauren my sister jessica and we got over there and because it was a monday we were the only people there because everybody goes there on the weekends and at one point i went out and i sat down in the water just off the island and so the water is up to my neck and uh, I'm just chilling out I mean couldn't get a better more perfect experience but my wife Lauren is into uh, seashells so a lot of times when I'm doing that kind of thing I'll, I'll see if I can find her a seashell so I so I start feeling around in the perfect. sand yeah yeah and and my wife actually comes over and sits down next to me and I go what the and I plucked from the sand a men's 14 karat gold ring with nine diamonds in it. You got to be kidding me, really? And it perfectly fit my ring finger. Okay? That's the probability of that is like Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy probability. You know? You're right. You're, you're right. And, and, and Lauren is looking at this and she goes, Yeah, you got to be blanking kidding me. Like she was. She was uh, just blown away i've never found anything like that in my whole life no. anything like that and i so i pulled this out and i said <laughs> this is yeah i mean like I, I i'm almost speechless because i'm going you know in my mind i'm going back to that moment uh, of how overwhelming that was for me and so my point is i could keep giving you examples personally but every single day, I get emails from people all over the world in every culture you can imagine who are telling me about having these like crazy synchronistic experiences when they use these things. So in my opinion, there's no doubt about the fact that they work. What makes it tricky is figuring out 
exactly you know how this works, why this works. Even if this is the world's greatest placebo, who gives a darn? It works, you know. So that's why I always tell people that honestly, if you want to know, one, yeah, yes, I've worked very hard. Hopefully, I have some talent. But seriously, one of the keys to my success that I've had living this life that I have is using wishing machines, and it's true. Yeah, well, I got to tell you, I'm curious. What, what did you do with the ring? Did you keep it? Did you melt the bad oh, boy yeah. down? You kept it, didn't you? Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's no way I would melt it down. I, you know, here in Las Vegas, every time I go to the casino and I'm going to gamble, guess what? I pull that ring out, and it's like my little lucky ring. And so, you know, I go into the casino, and I'm a very, very lucky man in the casino. And I don't just play slots. I play table games. You know, a little roulette, a little craps, some poker here and there. And when I, that's my lucky ring. So, yeah, to me, it, it represents, like, it reminds me of what, um, of what money is. And, and people get hung up on the concept of money thinking it's paper or coins or whatever, when actually all that money is is a transfer of energy. Uh, on my YouTube channel, uh, Joshua P. Warren, I have a video that I recently shot where I'm holding up a $100 trillion bill, which is the highest currency ever created by a government. It was created by the government of uh, Zimbabwe something like 12 years ago. And at that time, that $100 trillion bill would not even buy you a loaf of bread. And so it's, it's <laughs> really easy to get caught up on the value of something based upon uh, you know, cash flow. But you have to think that money is actually an expression of energy. It's a representation. And if you understand that, you can start attracting money to yourself in all kinds of new ways because the, you, you, you're sort of skipping the process of the dough. So, for example, one last thing I'll, I'll say about this. Let's say you contact me and people contact me all the time who want more money for some reason or another and they, they're interested in using a wishing machine. Somebody contacts me and says, okay, I want you know $3 million. And I say, well, why do you want it? And they say, well, you know, there's this house – on the cliff in Maine with the waves crashing on the shore and it costs $3 million. And I say, well, don't wish for wish. the house. Wish, exactly. Wish for the house. Don't wish for the $3 million. That's a means to an end. Skip the money part. Wish for what you want because you never know what ways the universe might provide for that thing to come to you. So that's why I feel like when I study matter and energy it doesn't always have to be creepy all the time we don't always have to talk about ghosts and monsters and aliens and ufos because the same principles of manifestation can also apply to bringing positive things into your life as well yeah i'm totally with you on that man the ring story is trippy though that is like that is a that is the probability of it still tripping me out because that tells you I'm always fascinated though, like how does it work? I know it works, man. I know this stuff works. I know it comes into like it comes in coincidence form. But it's funny like me like trying to analyze, I'm always trying to analyze how does it work, you know? Because people say, well this stuff that's just a coincidence. If you do that it's just a coincidence. And well, it's not a coincidence after a while. But if you think about it logically or uh, in the physical realm, it doesn't work that way. You know what I'm trying to say? There's no way that you could roll up on that ring like that if it's not just a big coincidence. However, you and I both know it's not a coincidence. And there's no way to physically explain it. Even with the double slit experiment, I don't think people can explain it. Like it's spooky, like Einstein said, you know? Well, uh, let's say there is an engineer listening to this show. And uh, he or she is just a strict mechanistic person, a rationalist, a materialist, doesn't believe in God or spirits or anything. Right. Um, speaking to that person, I would say, well, um, several years ago, and you can look this up and verify it on your own, Hitachi developed a quartz 
crystal um, chip, very much like a microchip. But this thing has the greatest storage capacity of anything that's ever been created. So uh, let's say you take like a microscope slide and you cut it in half. That's about how big this thing is and, and sort of what it looks like. And I, I can't even remember how many terabytes this thing can store. And it, it, it's able to uh, tolerate temperatures over 2,000 degrees Fahrenheit. I mean, it, it, it is unbelievably durable. And, and again, this is something that almost just looks like a little two-dimensional sliver. If you crack open a wishing machine, and you're really not supposed to do that, and that's a whole other conversation, but if you do, you will find that the, the, the ones that actually work have quartz crystals that are wired into them. And I believe that if you have a three-dimensional piece of quartz, and of course we can talk about crystal skulls possibly and, and that all being related, but if you have some, you know, not just a little sliver of quartz, but you have a chunk of quartz basically wired into one of these things, then it may be that whatever your brain is, whatever you are, you know, you I, you know, it, it's it's like Descartes, right? Um, uh, you, you are here because you think you're here, right? I think, therefore, I, I am. Yeah, right. Yeah, like I'm here. <laughs> whatever I am, I am something because I'm here. Maybe whatever that I am is, you take that and you put it into this thing, and it it it, it stores it in, in some way, and then you can sort of tune it. And so technologically, we're able to do this on a more crude level with basic data, but perhaps you can do this with your consciousness as well. And that is how that these machines are able to sit there and sort of keep transmitting this information uh, perpetually all the time, 24-7, even when you forget about it, because that's what you do. You set the machine, you... You know, you, you tune it and then you put it away and you just don't even think about it anymore. It's like the old Ron Popil set it and forget it. You, you set the thing, you put it away, and it's just, it, it's just sitting there continuing to transmit your intention. And so going back to cymatics, if cymatics shows us that you must have an energy mold first and then the physical world sort of – shapes or condenses into and around that energy mold, then this thing is sitting there and creating the energy mold for you into which your reality will eventually snap. You may not know exactly how that's going to happen, but who cares? As long as you get the result, you're good. Yeah, right. That's, yeah, see? But it's unexplainable. It's not really unexplainable, though. I get exactly what you're saying. There, there's been a ton of people that come on the show. We talk about crystals. Man, I live probably on one of the biggest quartz crystal deposits in the world, if not the biggest here in Arkansas. And um, people swear by it. But uh, these machines, you figured out how to tune them, right? You've figured out how to tune them to where they stay on that broadcast all the time. I mean, that's pretty cool. How many people are we talking about, though, that have reported? I mean, if you had to rough ballpark it, they report good stuff to you about these machines. Well, one of the things that we do is we try to keep up with our our people who buy these things. And, you know, obviously sometimes we just ship them out for experiments. Sometimes people buy them. We survey people. And I would say close to 5,000 people at this point. Big number. Yeah, I would say 5,000 is, is a very realistic number. And... So, so therefore, I mean, what we're talking about is again people in uh, countries that I don't even I didn't even know existed. You know, well, I mean, like, <laughs> so, 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 so this is not just a matter of something cultural. Uh, th what th the significance of that is that we're talking about something related to the state of being a human, and how the mind and body and environment all interrelate, and so. Um, as a matter of fact, Dr. Mulder, who makes, hand makes every single machine in his workshop in South Carolina. And I, and I, I want to reiterate this. 
okay, this is not like some kind of mass produced thing that you're going to get in China or whatever. I mean, no, there's a guy, his real name is not Dr. Mulder. You know, the, his, his, I won't tell you his real name, but, uh, he's, he's a very nice man. We've been friends for a long time. The reason he uses the pseudonym is because he's a fan of the X files. And also because that, um, if you get a reputation for building wishing machines, then you're going to have a new path beaten to your door and people crawling over your fence and into your window wanting a wish to come true. So he he's very reclusive and tries to protect his privacy, which is why it's such a big deal that he's going to be there for the conference that I'm doing here in Vegas in May and everybody can meet him in person. But um, anyway, uh, when when he makes these things, I mean, he he's by himself in his workshop, and uh, one day he came to me and he had one of these braces on. He goes, "Man, the carpal tunnel is is hurting me so bad." He goes, "I I'm going to have to set a machine <laughs> to, right. to help with the carpal tunnel." Right? Uh, so so every single one of these is um, I I think they're almost. Well, they really are like a work of art. I mean, every single one. So it's important for people to know that, like, when you when you get one of these from from us, um, it's coming directly from him. He'll correspond with you. I'll correspond with you. Um, I get so easily easily a thousand emails every we'll say twenty four to forty eight hours. And I can't respond to every one, but I do read every one. But you'd be amazed how many I respond to. And I do whatever I can to communicate with, with people. He does the same thing. And look, if you want to to experiment with this, then um, you just have to go to wishingmachineproject.com. Watch the free content there and uh, try it out. I mean, like, I don't know. Uh, I know it sounds ridiculous, but it, it's like you can keep no. doing the same thing that you're doing and getting the same result, or you can try something new. Actually, it doesn't sound ridiculous to me at all. There's a little space in between there where you're taking some very well-known things like quartz crystal wire, tuning machines, things like that. Because if people are going to say, well, maybe people, I know what people are thinking. Maybe it's just because I buy this machine that my mind projects different stuff, and now I'm going to have these things. I don't think so. If you, if any of you guys have ever studied magic, if you listen to the show, there is something to the quartz crystal thing. There's something to this stuff. There's also something to witching things up a little bit. When things get a little, I hate to use the, fr there's got to be a better word than witchy, but that's when the magic really starts happening. And so I think this is fantastic. And I hope one of you guys out there get one, because I'm really probably going to get one myself. And uh, we'll start hacking our reality. What do you say? We'll try that, too. We'll talk about that when we come back. Get a little bit deeper with this with Joshua P. Warren. Joshua P. Warren's the website. JoshuaPWarren.com, I mean. We'll be right back. In your face all over the place we're online 24 7 24 7 you're listening to the hottest internet station listen i want to tell you about gi joy from get the tea.com it's the best alchemical concoction of goodies for your stomach and digestive system i can recommend and that's all based on my experience packed with colostrum acidophilus aloe peppermint and turmeric if you do your own research, then you know this is the bee's knees for the stomach and digestion. Now, due to Big Brother's ears and the eye in the sky, you know I can't go into the details about what it helped me with. All I can say is, I got relief. It's non-GMO, no fillers, no preservatives, manufactured right here in the U.S. of A., and delivered to you by the only people who stay on top of the game and are out in front. Go grab a bottle of G.I. Joy at GetTheTea.com and see what all the fuss is about. Again, that's GetTheTea.com. AncientLifeOil.com. For your CBD needs, just remember, AncientLifeOil.com. What does it do for the body, you ask? I can't say do the people in the suits that run the industry. Big Farm is all over CBD because of its H-E, well, you know what I mean. Research the benefits of CBD on Google and come back to AncientLifeOil.com and purchase your CBD today. 
non-GMO, and all organic. You don't want to be using a petroleum product. You want to be using the cleanest CBD product on the market, ancientlifeoil.com. We even have CBD for your pet. Help your pet's discomfort. Help your discomfort. Log on to ancientlifeoil.com. That's ancientlifeoil.com. Newly reduced prices to pass off the savings to the most important person, you, ancientlifeoil.com. And one more thing, we have topicals too. So if you have joint pain and some different issues that are going on in your body, you might want to use a topical. Think about it, ancientlifeoil.com. Hi, this is Aaron Hunter, host of Real Paranormal Activity, the podcast where we tell real paranormal experiences of people from around the world. And we also conduct interviews with authors, investigators, psychics, and mediums, real people. Real stories, real fear. Thursdays at 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern on The Fringe FM. See you then. My name is Jake. I'm from Billings, Montana, and I am a Void Walker. Hey, Joe Root. Thanks for lighting the void. This is Janine in the bluegrass of Kentucky, and I am a Void Walker. What's up, guys? This is Damien from San Marcos, Texas, and I'm a Void Walker. I listen to the show to keep myself aligned with the world. Hi, this is Laura, a.k.a. Laura Lavender. I'm from Las Vegas, and I listen to Lighting the Void because it helps me understand some of the strangest experiences I've had. So thanks for all that you do and for always being there for us, Joe. You can tug all day long on a carpet that's been glued to the floor. Then you hurt. There are many strong glues out there. Let's see. There's liquid nails and Gorilla Glue. You ever try to remove 3M5200? That adhesive is strong. Then there's bathroom caulk, silicone rubber, adhesive tape, super glue, flex tape, and stickers. Graffiti. Scientists have come up with glues that stay stuck and can't be removed. Until now. Until Handyman Formula by DeBond. That's right. 95% of adhesives become unstuck when you spray Handyman Formula directly on them. Just spray, wait a few minutes, and remove. It's amazing. Most adhesives become unstuck when you use Handyman Formula. Visit DeBondCorporation.com or MCMaster.com. Call 561-575-4200. This stuff really works. Handyman Formula by DeBond, a great Christmas gift ever seen an extraterrestrial? It can be hard to believe they exist unless you've seen one for yourself. What if I told you I've seen them my whole life but have never had a witness who shared the encounter with me? Now, what if I told you I saw four of them, two with blue skin, and there are over 20 witnesses to this CE5 event? My new book, The Blue Beings, Visitation at the UFO Conference, documents actual accounts from real witnesses many of which have gone on record to attest to this otherworldly reality. Be a part of the quantum paradigm shift that is taking place right now. Go to johnpolkmedia.com to get your copy of the Blue Beans Visitation at the UFO Conference on sale right now at johnpolkmedia.com. That's J-O-H-N-P-O-L-K Media. This is the Rogie Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogie. Doctors at the KCI Institute at Oregon Health and Science University in Portland have announced the first use of CRISPR, the revolutionary gene editing tool inside a person's body. The tool was used to modify the genes responsible for a particular form of inherited blindness. And those responsible for pioneering the effort say there's a real potential to not only restore the patient's vision, but open up a new line of medicine specifically used to target an altered DNA. If the first few attempts seem safe, doctors plan to test it on 18 children and adults. Charles Albright, chief scientific officer at Adidas Medicine, says, We literally have the potential to take people who are essentially blind and make them see. Construction is set to begin for a large telescope array dedicated to detecting natural and artificial sources of optical and infrared light. 
Once operational, the system called Panoceti will be capable of scanning the entire sky, significantly boosting our chances of detecting alien laser signals. The telescope has been in development since 2018. Panoceti, which stands for Pulsed All Sky Near Infrared Optical Search for our Extraterrestrial Intelligence, currently consists of two prototype telescopes. These telescopes have started to collect raw data, allowing the researchers led by physicist and astronomer Shelley Wright from UC San Diego to test the new design. Though it's just the start, the entire array could eventually consist of hundreds of telescopes. And the system will be used to observe natural phenomenon, such as fast radio bursts or FBRs. Panoceti will be capable of detecting infrared radiation, which could help with the detection of extraterrestrial Dyson spheres, a hypothetical megastructure popularized by the late Freeman Dyson. The Panoceti team is still considering possible locations for the array, and construction is scheduled to start in 2021. UFO experts claimed that an alien vessel as big as the moon was captured by NASA's SOHO. The alleged UFO was spotted by NASA's solar satellite and reported on by YouTube channel The Hidden Underbelly 2.0. According to the owner of the channel, the strange object was recorded moving across the solar system on February 29th. The camera known as Stereo A was positioned to observe the sun. In a short clip recorded by the camera, various planets such as the Earth, Venus, and Mercury can be seen orbiting in the solar system. Then, an unidentified object appears in the video and starts to move towards the planets. Unfortunately, after a couple seconds, the strange object disappears. This is the Rogie Report News on the Fringe FM. I'm Jess Rogie. You're listening to Lighting the Void. The calling number is 1-800-588-0335. If you would like to text, you can text in at 501-777-5631. Yeah, you know, I don't know if anybody uses that text line anymore, but you can still text in if you want. You can also uh, go to the Fringe of Fem Chat and join all of our cool folks over there. At the Fringe FM chat, there's a whole... When you get in there, I know it gets confusing to some people. But every night, we just kind of hang out in the main hall, and it stays up 24-7. But there are other chat rooms where you can put questions and talk about nature and share pictures with your family, and it's growing. we got a cool little community over here. Joshua P. Warren is our guest tonight, and, uh, man, we are talking about all things strange and all things manifesting, and... You've been doing this for like over, what'd you say, 20, 27 years now? Is that right? That's how long 27, you've been doing? Yeah, 27 years as a professional paranormal investigator. And uh, yeah, I started when I was a teenager and what a wild ride it's been. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, well, it's done well for you. And this event that you're doing uh, in Las Vegas called Finding Your Magic, How to Hack Reality, that is uh, a big discussion now, man. Like, I'm not saying that it's not real or anything like that. But a lot of people are writing about this, talking about this. They know it's truth. Everybody's finding their own edges to it. And um, I'm happy about it, man. But doesn't it seem kind of funny now? And I'm curious what you think about this, that the more, because right now, and it's just statistically true, there are more people that are practicing things like magic and mysticism than ever before. It's popular. It's in TV shows and stuff and everything now. And yet, Still, the news is kind of just like pushing end time stuff. You know, I even heard some other uh, person the other day say, well, it's people are worshiping Babylon and all this other stuff. And the mysteries more than they ever have. And we've got pestilences and viruses. And it's like, what's really going on here? Right. Is it really a war of our conscious? I, it feels like that, doesn't it? Sometimes and it's really just a war of self-discovery in our consciousness, I think. OK, well. Let's let, let's look at this realistically, based upon what we know, historically speaking. So around 150 years ago, we had slaves in this country. Yeah, right. Um, uh, you know, 100 years ago, 
women could not vote. Um, we are getting so much better as we progress. Uh, I mean, if, if, it's to me, it's sort of astounding when you go to some of these museums where they have torture devices from the Middle Ages and they show like this. Stuff. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Put a big corkscrew on a guy. Well, let's see what we can get out of him. What do we want out of him with this corkscrew? Um, I mean, we are getting so much better as a collective society that life is better than it's ever been. We have refrigerators. Mm -hmm. We have air conditioning. We have got uh, anesthetics. Imagine going to the doctor before that they could numb things. <laughs> yeah, right. Yeah, I actually read a whole report about that. It's funny you brought that up, man, because I was thinking, what? How they did surgeries on people back in the day, and literally all they had was, like, alcohol. That's it, you know? And they're going to amputate a leg or something. You, I mean, you give a guy a shot of whiskey. I've had plenty of shots yeah. of whiskey. That is not enough for me to have my <laughs> legs sawed off. No <laughs> way, man. Yeah, no way. Uh, I, I went to the doctor the other day. That my, my dad has got glaucoma. Uh, well, he was sort of like borderline glaucoma, but he got it treated uh, early on. So I went to the eye doctor the other day just to make sure that my eyes are okay. And they literally had a device there, and they touched my eyeball, and I couldn't feel it at all. Oh. I said, "I said you just touched my eyeball." He goes, "Yep." And I, I so look, <laughs> that's true. We are so lucky, man. You can get onto an airplane and fly anywhere in the world within 24 hours. And I mean, it, it, we are so spoiled that we don't even know what bad news is anymore so when you watch this stuff in in the media they have to exaggerate it they have to magnify it they have to terrify you enough to to uh, tap into that fight or flight survival of the fittest mechanism because otherwise you, you wouldn't watch i mean you know as a guy who's traveled around the world quite a bit i mean most people that you meet are really really nice yeah i mean Five percent of the time, you might meet a jerk, but ninety-five percent of the time, people are very cool. And e e even if you're a blatant outsider, you know, for five years in Puerto Rico, I mean, I I couldn't speak Spanish very well, and uh, I stood out like a sore thumb. Everybody was super nice to me, so uh, I find it very sad that we wake up in the morning and the first thing we do is look at the mainstream media, which is controlled by a bunch of corporate conglomerates that are all plotting, literally, literally plotting every single day to try to scare you and terrify you and put negativity into your mind so they can sell ads. That really offends me. And so uh, all I can say is, look, you've got to be – you got to be out there for you know on your own and and like take a look at history, take a look at statistics, and 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 realize sometimes if you just turn off all this stuff and you just open the window or walk outside, the birds are chirping, the sun is shining, the breeze is blowing, and it's not that bad. You have to keep things in perspective. Yeah, yeah. and you know what. Uh a lot of people might be saying, well, that's easy for you to say because you're from Asheville. We're having all kinds of crazy stuff happen where I live. It's that way. It can it get that way here. I mean, it can get that way anywhere. Uh, and if you look at the numbers, I mean, we do we really have to talk about this again, right? Like, don't give in to the fear. I mean, all of us know about manifesting things. You ever notice how, you know, how Darth, you said you're a Star Wars fan, right? You know, oh, yeah. Darth Vader's always like, you only knew the power of the dark side. They stress the power <laughs> of the dark side a lot because yeah. even in magic, it's like the shortcut to things. And even in uh, manifestation, if you want to manifest something super quick, just get really afraid of something happening. And that's what will happen. Even in the market, things go down much faster and harder than they go up. The only reason why that happens is because that's where everybody's intentions and stuff is. If the world would get that too good to be true mentality mind out of them and all the programming that their parents had put in, I'm hoping that'll happen one day, then it would be the reverse. You know what I mean? I think I really think it would. 
Well, I tell you what, Joe, this may be the most valuable piece of wisdom that I can pass along to anybody listening to this program tonight. And it's one thing to hear this. It's another thing to do it. Okay, let's see if you'll actually do this. So Einstein, for example, uh, and various other intelligent people are attributed to uh, saying the simplest thing that you can do is make a decision. Do I live in a friendly or an unfriendly universe? So here is the simplest thing that you can do. You have to make this decision right now. And write this down. If you, anybody listening, if you, if you have a pad, if you have a pen, grab it. Tomorrow, when you wake up, I want the first thing that you do to be raise up your head and say, I live in a friendly, loving, supportive universe that wants me to be happy and succeed. So I'm going to repeat that. I live in a friendly, loving, supportive universe that wants me to be happy and succeed. And you can also go to freecharm.com and you'll see that information. If you start your day, and it's one thing to think it, but if you literally, tomorrow when you wake up, you literally, even if you don't believe it, it's, it's fine if you don't even believe it. If you just wake up and do that, see what happens to you tomorrow. Because I get emails every day from people who say, holy, you know what? I did that, and here's what happened. And it's wonderful, wonderful stories. You do that every single day. Every single day, that should be the first thing that you do before you have your drink of water or you go to the bathroom or whatever. You just say that, and if you do that, you will start shifting the foundation of your life. And once you do that and you start seeing, oh, wow, I have a friendly relationship with the universe now, then uh, that will open the door for these more, I guess you could call them advanced or, or, or more extensive things that, that we're talking about that you can get into once you start realizing this is real. Have you ever had a, like a, an encounter though, like a, a spiritual encounter yourself with a, any type of being guides, angels, stuff like that. Cause I start thinking about that when I hear people say that, um, but I don't think you have to have that. I'm just curious if you have, because you do get into a lot of different things, uh, in this field that we've talked about. Have you ever had an encounter with something like that? Well, let's start from like my basic beginnings because I spent approximately six years investigating supposedly haunted houses. Yeah, that's what I was and, thinking. Yeah, and never seeing anything that convinced me the ghosts were real. Uh, it, it, it almost became like a psychology project because, you know, af after a while, I realized that some of these people I was talking to seemed to be telling the truth. And so the only way I could rationalize it was, well, maybe some people have certain rods and cones in their eyes, and I don't have those rods and cones. I'm just not one of these people who can see ghosts. But then all that changed. <laughs> uh, finally, uh, one night when I was in an attic of the house, and I was with another researcher named Rob, and him, Rob said, Josh, look. And I turned around, and he and I were about three feet apart, and here was this big blue, kind of like grayish blue, misty form hovering between the two of us. And you know what's funny is that I was so rational, if you want to put it that way, that I would have second-guessed myself if it hadn't been for the fact that I had a camera around my neck and I took a picture of it. I also touched it. And he did, too. So we're, we're on different sides of it, and I touched it. It was cold. It made the hair stand up on my knuckles. But it was that picture that I go back to because if I had not had that picture, I would have thought, did I imagine that? You know, did, did, yeah. did, I, did I dream that? You know, like, like, like and that's kind of sad 
it, it, that's kind of a sad statement about how that we view reality. I mean, like if, if you're again a rational person and you try to look at things logically, it's easier to second guess yourself than accept what you experienced if it doesn't fit into your paradigm. So, mm-hmm. well, in, we've been anyway, doing that since the beginning of time. We negate our experience <laughs> and go with our programs because yes. that's what we think we're supposed to do. That's exactly right. Yeah, you got it. You got it. And, and, and what we're doing right now, you know, you and I are, are trying to help other people break out of that programming by listening to this and saying, trust yourself a little bit more. Uh, now, look, I'm, some people, of course, are just wacky as heck and they're out there. We, we you know, we, that's just something you have to deal with. But, but these things do happen. They're just rare. That's why they're called paranormal. And I don't think the TV business helps us one bit because you can't crank this stuff out on a weekly schedule. I mean, a, a lot of the stuff that you see on TV is, as you mentioned, confirmation bias, uh, but or or whatever else that they're sort of manipulating just to get their paycheck that week. But yep. in re- in in reality, though, like this stuff does happen. So that was the first time I, I saw a ghost. Now, since then, it hasn't been like the floodgates have opened. I've only had a handful of ghostly experiences that I'll, that I'll even talk about um, because that I think they, they live up to my standard of, of credibility. Um, but one of them was uh, really like – this is probably the spookiest night I ever had in my life. And um, – I was at Myrtle's Plantation in St. Francisville, Louisiana, which is outside of uh, Baton Rouge. And Myrtle's Plantation has a long, sordid, bloody history, a lot of um, mistreatment of slaves and stuff. And so I was spending the night there by myself, completely alone. I had the whole property to myself. I couldn't believe it. I mean, like, Basically, when I got there, the maintenance dude gave me the keys and said, have a good night, and I could have stolen everything they had. <laughs> Why am I getting a spooky feeling about the story already? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got this giant plantation Yeah. Out, out in the middle of, like, swampland. As a matter of fact, to really give you some more detail, I just happened – I just so happened to get there in the middle of a huge flood – and I almost died on the way there because this bridge had washed out, and I was the first car to get to the bridge. And I literally hydroplaned to the edge of this thing before I went. I mean, like, it get, I mean, like, it scares me. I don't even like thinking about what that would have been like. So anyway, then I get there, and there's a pack of black cats, like something out of a Stephen King novel, running all over the place. So anyway. Oh, my God. Yeah, so here it is. I'm worn out. I'm tired. I'm sleep deprived. That granted, but still, I'm there by myself, and they put me in what's called the General David Bradford Suite, which has a big high ceiling, has a four poster bed like Ebenezer Scrooge would sleep in, these big paintings on the wall with like the eyeballs that follow you around, and you know, <laughs> yeah. so it's creepy, right? Uh, so anyway. I was, uh, I go in there and it's like probably 10 o'clock at night and I'm so worn out, but, um, I had a bunch of EMF meters and stuff. And, and, and by the way, and there's nobody here. I mean, you're all by yourself. No, I'm serious. I am not exaggerating in a plantation. That's scary, man. I invite any of your listeners to contact the management of Myrtle's plantation and verify that I was alone, 100% alone on that property. And I, the great thing is, once again, I have video footage. And so I turned on these meters, and that's another thing that annoys me. You have a lot of these so-called paranormal investigators out there who say, oh, we're getting some EMF over there. And I like to say, what is an electromagnetic field? Like, what's the, like? can you explain to me? Because I know what it is. An electromagnetic field has a definition. Okay. And I won't get into that right now, but a lot of these people are running around with boxes and they're saying, oh, I'm getting – it's squealing, it's squeaking. and they don't making know a they, noise. They That's don't know what they're know. talking about. Okay? <laughs> they don't know what they're talking about. I actually can have a – we could do an hour on what an electromagnetic field is. So anyway, 
I turn on all these devices, and all of a sudden, we start getting. Oh, I start. I was by myself, but I started getting like all these weird, like huge fluctuations. And so I'm videotaping this, and and honestly, the fact that I'm videotaping it made me feel almost like that I was not alone. And um, which is that, that's a weird thing to videotape. Yeah. Yeah, it makes you feel like you're not like like oh I'm with people, but you're not. You're by yourself. So anyway, as I'm videotaping, all of a sudden on the door, boom, boom, boom. No, I'm no. about down to my skin. Yeah, right? it's storming outside. So I went over and I opened the door, and there was nobody there. I'm videotaping all this. So then I turned around and I said, "If there's somebody in this room with me, would you please do that again?" Boom, boom, boom. Okay. Now, once again, I'm getting goosebumps even here talking to you, Joe. And so, but just to be sure, I said, if there's somebody here, can you please do that again? Boom, boom, boom. All right. That is when the fight or flight kind of instinct kicked in. (laughs) Yeah, I'd have done this first time for me. Yeah, I can't help but like feel like I want to get out of this room. But I resisted that. Long story short, I know we're coming up on a break here. I had this conversation, can we call it that? This went on for four hours. Knock on that table. Knock on that wall. This thing was knocking, was rapping on things in the room, and I videotaped all this. And finally, it got to the point where I was so tired, I had to go to bed. And I thought to myself, I, at that point, I was like convinced this thing is going to materialize. And it, and I, I had already made up my strategy. If I wake up and this thing is standing here next to the bed, screw this. I'm out of here. Out. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to sleep too. in my car. You know, like yeah. I'd already made the plan. Like I'm going to sleep in my car. Yeah. Um, and so the last time it woke me up was about eight thirty in the morning, banging on the headboard. And, uh, if anybody listening wants to see the footage from that night, if you go to Joshua P Warren.com, there's a section called gallery of the strange. And in there you'll see like world's wildest ghost photos and you can click through and it's in there. But anyway, uh, though to me, that was a life altering experience because, the misty form that I saw, well, I don't know what that was. This was an interactive, intelligent, conscious, aware thing. And uh, that, yeah, it changed my life. It really did. Man, I got to I gotta check that out, actually. I want to see that. But, you know, someone just said something in the chat that I thought was interesting. Maybe you think about, you know, you were alone. Think about maybe a ghost that has been alone in that place the whole time. They're like, hey, I got somebody to talk to. I'll knock all night, buddy. Just keep talking to me. You know, could have been that way. But did Well, you, that's true. You know, did yeah. you get a scary feeling, though? Like you were, I mean, of course you're scared. I don't know how you lasted that long, though, honestly. I would have been out. I slept there the next night also. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but you know yeah, you, that's a good point because it it didn't feel harmful, you know, like it it was just scary because when you are there by yourself on a giant property and I had the lights out. I turned the lights out. Okay, I was using night shot. When you're there in the dark by yourself on a giant property and some kind of a disembodied spirit or energy or whatever the heck you want to call it, is clearly there and interacting with you. If you're not scared in some way, then you probably have a screw loose somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yeah, that, that was, you know, so I, but, but no, I didn't, I didn't feel the, like I was threatened by it, but, uh, it's that fight or flight thing, you know? I mean, it just, it freaks you out. Yeah. Well, you're a, you're a very, I guess you're a braver man than me. I don't know. I've been to a plantation before. There are some pretty freaky places. We only got like one more, uh, well, a few more minutes here. This is our last break. A few more minutes with Joshua P. Warren tonight. So get your questions in. I'll be asking them to him right when we come back after these messages. Stay with us.
Charlton from Metaphorical Archaeology. If you've ever had a traumatic paranormal experience, the effects of it may stay with you for years. Uh, who do you talk to? You can't go to conventional help. What we do is we use emotional freedom techniques or tapping to actually neutralize the effects of that event. Maybe when you tell the story now, your heart races and your palms get sweaty. You don't even want to think about it because you don't know how to neutralize that. That's what EFT tapping does. It neutralizes those emotions. The circuit that that was recorded on is gone. The energy flows freely and you're free of it. And that's what emotional freedom is all about. We offer this as a pro bono service, but this is something that I offer because no one, it seems, is helping people with these experiences. If you'd like to reach me, it's really easy. My cell phone is 214-995-3754. Please leave a message. I will get back to you as quickly as possible. Or you can email me, barb.eft at gmail.com. And EFT stands for Emotional Freedom Techniques. Reach out to me. It's confidential. This works. You won't believe the results. Hey, this check is wrong. I worked a holiday and seven hours of overtime. Not getting paid correctly is a real pain. It could also hurt our boss if our company provides out-of-compliance checks. That's right. Construction companies doing business with the government can get fined, or officials of the companies can go to jail if the checks aren't right. It's a law. The Davis-Bacon Act has 30 compliance issues for every check, but there is an easy way for construction companies to be in compliance. EMARS offers Compliant Client, a web-based system that finds and corrects all 30 of the possible out-of-compliance check issues. Users of Compliant Client report an 80% savings in time and money. Running a weekly payroll usually takes about five minutes. All 15,000 plus clients of EMARS have never had a legal compliance issue. Plus, they sleep better on check day. Contact EMARS at emarsinc.com or call 480-595-0466. All right, man, this is Crow 777 and you are listening to The Fringe FM. Right, me old chiners. I know it's an ad break, but before you lot shoot off and make yourself a cup of Rosie Lee or whatever else it is you're going to sling down your Gregory Peck, you need to listen to me bubble. If, like me, you found your way to light in the void via a downloadable podcast, you might want to take a butcher's at the Fringe FM Wind and Kite. You won't, Adam and Eve, how many other shows there are or what they rabbit on about. Ancient history, conspiracy, the consciousness, the esoteric, the occult, metaphysics, parapolitical, ufology, technology, Technology and spirituality to name but a few. They got featured hosts like Ryan Gable, Jeremy Scott, Alex Exum, Tim Doyle, Cortana and Gigi, Susanna Ross, the Reverend John Polk, Michael Deacon and J.D. Lewis. You might find yourself listening to the thoughts and theories of the author of The Fish You Just Finished Reading. Or you could pick up the dog and bone, call in and tell everyone your own beliefs or experiences. So do me a favour. Before you put on the ansel or crack open a bottle of vino or roller joint, go to the Fringe FM and see what you're missing. From a cave in the depths of your mind, it's Lighting the Void with Joe Root. The Fringe FM isn't just a radio station. We also provide services for all your audio production needs. If you are interested in live radio or pre-recorded podcasts, we're here to help. We even do audio enhancements and voiceovers if needed. If you want to do a podcast or live radio show and even want the option to syndicate on terrestrial radio from simple audio file enhancement to live production and call screening, we have you covered. We have worked with some of the best professionals in the business in order to provide coaching instruction for content creation, show structure, and more. Contact The Fringe Digital Media for more at info at thefringe.fm. That's info at thefringe.fm. Or call 501-777-5631 for a consultation. Hey, I'm J.M. DeBoard, and when I want to talk about dreams, I look up my man Joe Root and his show, Lighting the Void. 
Okay, nurse, let's get this man to the ER stat. Right away, doctor. We see this every day. Heart attack or angina pain due to blocked and clogged arteries. Chelation can remove obstructions or blockages from arteries and help avoid painful and expensive surgery. Now there's Angioprim. It's a liquid oral chelation product that you take with juice. You start to feel the results fast. Angioprim increases blood flow all over the body, and that means more energy and strength to take on the day with less aches and pains. 60 years of research has gone into chelation, and Angioprim is the result. A safe and easy way to unblock your veins and arteries from buildup that slow circulation. Paging Dr. Jones, please report to the emergency room right away. Log on now to angioprim.com. That's A-N-G-I-O-P-R-I-M.com. Or to speak with a trained consultant, give Angioprim a call at 954-882-7221. That's 954-882-7221. We are live on the Fringe FM. You're listening to Lighting the Void, and I am your host, Joe Roop. Our guest tonight, Joshua P. Warren. Look, if it's the first time you're listening to the show, we talk about all things strange, but mainly uh, consciousness exploration, the esoteric magic, ufology, all the stuff that you don't hear when you listen to politics and regular mainstream radio. radio. And that's where you need to stay. We're going to be at the Ozark Mountain UFO Conference April the 10th through the 12th. Come out and see us. And, um... Yeah, I was talking to you, Josh, during the break about living in Asheville and now living in Vegas. What do you, uh, so do you see more UFOs now that you live out there? Just curious, because I would love to move out to that place or just stay out there for a little while. Yeah, well, you know, this is the center of disclosure right now. And, and I mean, like, that's a whole show, honestly, uh, all the disclosure that's happening here. And you really have to live here right now in order to understand it all and pay attention to it all because i mean when you just watch the local news you have senator harry reed who is the senate majority leader there on the local news and he you know he's almost dead i mean he's dying of some kind of cancer and he's saying basically of all the things that i could be talking about right now i'm trying to convince the senate to open up and share with the american people the reality of these exotic materials and what's happening with the UFO phenomenon and all that. But, um, you know, I, being born and raised in, in Asheville, and, of course, my family on both sides were in Asheville, North Carolina, since, uh, well, even the late 1700s. I lived there most of my life, and even though I love it and it's a huge tourist attraction for obvious reasons, I think last year they got more rain than they'd ever gotten in the the history of record keeping. And so it's kind of nice to be out here in the desert. Get some sunshine, man. That's what you need. Yeah, I mean, like, if if it rains here, that's, like, breaking news. Seriously, I'm not even joking. If it rains here, (laughs) that's top of the news. Um, and, And so... Uh, I kind of like that. Just every, every day you get up and it's all shiny and sunny and dry. And um, and also, you know, we were talking a little bit off the air about the fact that if you, you know, if, if you're on the strip and you have all the glitz and glamour, uh, your senses are bombarded. Everything's just too loud and overwhelmed. But you can drive literally just a few minutes away and get off the strip. And if you go out into the desert, you can find places there that are so still and calm and quiet that the only thing you hear is your blood rushing through your veins. And that is not an exaggeration. That's all you hear is you, you, you can hear your blood in your body. Uh, it's, it's like cave quiet uh, when you're out there in the desert. Because I guess it's just because there's no sound for anything to reflect off of. Yeah, well, I... So, I stayed in Pahrump when I went out there, actually, but drove yeah. into Vegas every day. And it was, I, you know what? I didn't even know Art Bell lived in Pahrump when I went out there. I had no idea. And I was a huge Art Bell fan. Didn't know that's where he lived. And that stupid. How could I be a huge Art Bell fan and not know that? But um, I stayed yeah, out that, there. That was his headquarters. Yeah. And yeah. drove 
um, I guess it was Death Valley Road or Death Valley, whatever. And I remember thinking, man, like there was no light pollution because, you know, you're out of Vegas. And I was thinking, man, look at the stars. Like they're going from one horizon to the other. I've never seen this many stars in my entire life. And I can't imagine what it would look like with like night vision or something too out there. But yeah, it was incredible. It was beautiful, actually. And I don't, I'm, I'm attracted to that. The deserts and beaches, sunshine, that kind of thing, and big night skies. That's my favorite thing. Well, I, I've got third generation night vision goggles. And nice. so, yeah. And, and, you know, those things still, they cost thousands of dollars, you know, for a pair of those. They're not easy to come by. And so the funny thing is, getting back to your question, I mean, I have seen a variety of UFOs throughout my life, especially using the third gen. But it's getting harder and harder um, to determine what you're seeing nowadays because of just drones and, and new technology. But that said, the most incredible UFO encounter that I ever had happened just south of here 10 years ago, a little over 10 years ago. It was uh, in Laughlin, Nevada, which is... Um, Mm, I want to say maybe an hour and a half's drive south of Vegas. And so in, in Laughlin, I was out there. I, as a matter of fact, they do a big UFO conference there, and they used to do the International UFO Congress there. And then I was there as a speaker. And that is when I met Dean Worsing, who is a very well-known investigator in UFOs and paranormal phenomena. And uh, anyway, Dean... And uh, a couple other guys and I were out there in the desert outside of Laughlin, Nevada, about 9.30 at night. By the way, I used to call it Nevada, but all the locals call it Nevada. It sounds a little weird to me, but all right. It's it does Nevada. sound weird to me, too. I don't think I yeah. can call it Nevada. Now you got to get used to it. They'll, they'll beat you up if you don't say it. <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, here we are out, out in the desert, and uh, there are four of us, and three of us have night third gen night vision and at one point i actually thought that my goggles were messed up because there I, I looked to my right and i saw what appeared to be a huge v shape in the sky and i it, it literally to me looked like maybe it was some kind of a digital artifact or something so i took down the goggles i couldn't see anything and i put the goggles back up and i said guys i think my goggles are messed up cuz i'm seeing this big v shape in the sky and then i hear this chorus of holy because now they're turning their goggles in that direction and now we're all seeing it and that is when i realized that no this is not something just in my goggles we are all watching this gigantic, gigantic V-shaped thing. I don't want to say a triangle. To our eyes, it looked like a big V that was very small. How big are we talking about here, though? Oh, man. I, I was dwarfed. Okay. It, it, the biggest thing I've ever seen. How about that? The wow. biggest thing I've ever seen in my life. This thing... I mean, it, again, it's one of those deals that gives you the goosebumps. It, it, it slowly passed. It probably took it a couple minutes from uh, the east to the west. And as it went overhead, I've never felt so small in my life. I mean, it was, it was freaky, freaky, and totally silent, completely silent. And, of course... We we're all mesmerized. None of us had cameras hooked up to it or anything like that. And this thing just silently passed over and disappeared into the distance. And after that, the rest of the night, we just sat up. Like, I couldn't sleep. Yeah. All we did was sit there and talk about this over and over and over and over again in my hotel room. And the next morning, I called everybody. Okay, I called the airport. I called the military base. I called the wildlife commission. I called everybody and said, here's what I saw last night. Is there any explanation? And nobody had any explanation for it. And so no I'm telling you, blips, Joe, nothing. Nobody had any reports of anything. Huh? Nope, nope, nope. Not at all. 
I'm, I'm telling you, this stuff, when, when it happens to you, okay, and again, you have to understand, I am a guy who has pursued this throughout most of my life. Right. I have put myself in these situations where I am more likely to experience it than the average person. When you are like me and you put yourself in that position and you see these things, it's I don't know what it is. Okay, I don't. I I can't tell you that that was an alien craft or if it was some kind of secret military stuff or whatever. But if I not had the night vision goggles, I would have never known that that thing floated overhead. But the fact that I had those goggles, uh, well, it allowed me to see it, and it it's it's so amazing. Well, was it definitely see- like a, a craft? I mean, or was it? You know, be, well, the reason why I asked that is because we don't know what's out there in the universe. I mean, it, and I'm thinking, did it look like a, a craft or did it look like it was some type of entity moving across? Do you know what I'm saying? Like to, to me, I, I have no doubt that it was a craft. I produced this show that uh, two times a week here in Las Vegas. It's called the Creepy Vegas Ghost and UFO Show. And we do it on Wednesdays on the Strip for all ages, and then on Saturdays at uh, Millennium Fandom, which is a really cool bar right next to Zach Bagan's Haunted Museum there, and that's only for 21 up. And one of the things that we feature is the experience that a man named Sean Kevin Jason had. Yeah, I know him. Yeah, I've talked to him before. You've talked to him. Okay. Okay. And and when Art was living in Barump, Art used to talk about seeing these big black triangular things flying over. And Sean Kevin Jason actually came to our show, told us about his experience. If anybody's going to be in Vegas soon, go to creepyvegas.com, creepyvegas.com. Uh, he told us about his experience. And then I went out in the desert with him, and he had you know a little model of the craft – that he had seen, and it just so happened to be exactly at the spot where I documented a time anomaly in the summer of 2018. But the thing is, Sean Kevin Jason said that he got the impression that it was a man-made craft. Um, So, in other words, we have this sort of hall of mirrors here where we know that alien and exotic technology is being back-engineered out here in Las Vegas. So when you see something, you have to scratch your head and say, is this alien or is this some man-made back-engineered stuff or does it fall in another category? So I don't know for sure, but even though what I saw was a V-shape, it may be that it was actually a triangle, and I just was able to see the leading edge of it, you know, or edges of it. Uh, but oh, but this is this is this is the place to be right now if you're into UFOs for sure. There's no telling what's going on in that desert. Truthfully, nah. there's no telling. There's so much land out there, so much deserted land that we think is deserted. There's no telling. You know, and it's funny you talk about Sean because Sean, he's been on the show a couple of times and we talked to him about, he got really into time, big time, like talking about time and uh, I think it was reverse probabilities and things like that. I'm like, what in the world? You could tell that he's experienced something big uh, because he'll talk about some of the times the voices he heard that would tell him something was going to happen and then it was, then it would happen. And then later on in his life, he ends up, you know, like seeing a ship, right? And it's like, yeah, there's something strange about all this. And I don't, th- I think when we, f- if we ever really f- truly find out the truth about UFOs, and most people don't even think this about me, though, honestly, uh, Joshua, but I really think it's going to be much bigger than we imagine. It's not going to be like, oh, yeah, there are flying saucers with little gray aliens and stuff. That did happen. Roswell happened. I think it's going to be something bigger, something like, yeah, we've actually been talking to these cats for a long time. And, you know, we've been working on their technology for 50 or 60 years um, and they've know how to slip time and all this other stuff. I really believe that. I think it's bigger than we think. I mean, why would Harry Reid be like he's uh, like you said, he's about to die. And the one thing that's on his mind, it's not the coronavirus. It's not curing AIDS or cancer. He's thinking about this. Think about that. 
Yeah, I mean, and, you know, I know that pretty soon we're, we're going to have to wrap the show up, but I mean, like, I have this whole timeline. Actually, okay, listen to this. Okay, so in December of 2017, ATIP, the Advanced Aerospace Threat Identification Program, was announced. Mm -hmm. And then in early June of uh, 2018, NASA announces that, quote, complex organic material was found on Mars. And then June 18th of 2018, I discovered a time warp on the way to Area 51, and that was the same day that President Trump announced the Space Force. Space Force, yeah. Uh, July 25th of 2018, NASA announces that there is, quote, an underground lake on Mars, end quote. And then on July 25th of 2018, George Knapp released uh, Senator Harry Reid's letter which was dated June 24th of 2009, where he is saying we have these exotic materials that are going to affect warfare and communications and transportation, and we don't want our adversaries to get it. So in other words, where did that come from if we don't want our adversaries to get it? Uh, and then August of 2018, it was announced that in June – of 2018, when I got my time warp reading, that the Air Force had dropped a new type of Earth penetrating nuclear gravity bomb from a B 2 at Nellis Air Force Base right beside the time warp location. And I could keep going on, but my point is that if you just catch a news story here and there between like getting the kids to school. And fixing dinner and going to work and doing whatever you have to do to get through the day, well, then you might not be able to connect these dots. But my job and part of my value is to connect dots. And there are a lot of dots that I am connecting here and that anybody who's paying attention should be connecting that are basically expressing – hey, disclosure has happened. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if you're waiting for President Trump to stand up in front of a podium and say we have aliens, well, think about the fact that no matter what President Trump or any other president stands up at a podium and says, immediately you have 50% of the public saying, I don't believe it because he said it. All right. So, So what are you waiting for? Look at the facts. If you look at the facts, if you keep up with the data, you keep up with the information, you can see that our government has told us in a very soft but a very conclusive way that we are not alone. And the reason this is not the big headline and uh, coronavirus is, is that if we're not alone, well, then we think – well, who's in charge here? Uh, you know, uh, are the aliens in charge? Or, or but with coronavirus, oh no, we we've got this under control. We're the we're the officials, and so um, that's sort of the the way the news is spun. Yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah, but there's a lot of shady stuff goes on in the background too, man. And that's the thing is, you, it's trying to stick with the facts about that stuff gets a little hard sometimes because I can't tell. If just to be honest with you, I can't tell sometimes uh, what's real when it comes to agendas. Like part of me thinks that they're just trying to, you know, promote their book companies and stuff and work. And, you know, and I got a guy that works in ufology that's partnered with us from UFO seekers. And he's looked into this stuff and he's like, man, a lot of this is just money pushing this you know, book company, man. They're really trying to push this publishing. They're all in bed with each other, including the, gov the you know, the politicians. And I'm like, yeah, I could see that, too. But then you look at some of the reports of what people have seen, and it's like it gets a little muddy. But I am with you when it comes to disclosures already happened because there are some facts about a lot of facts that kind of line up. And I'm sure you've got way more than me that let me know that it's already happened. It's already here, man. And I really would like to just 
what you what you talk about that soft thing that they gave us that's exactly what i think too almost like they gave us a cookie so to speak and say okay here's some information now you can stop pushing so hard and so we can do our thing you know that's what i feel like sometimes oh yeah well i mean don't you think it's funny that you've always heard the argument that when orson wells did his war of the worlds broadcast everybody panicked everybody flipped out and Mm -hmm. so that was used as the excuse like well we can't tell the public about this because that's what they're going to (laughs) do and and yet what are they doing now when you when every single news source that you look at is coronavirus 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 you know i mean lauren got on the the internet and uh, like a a little pack of hand sanitizer was like 45 dollars or something ridiculous like that so look people people can handle aliens right now but when you tell them there's this horrible infection going around that you're going to die from, um, that freaks people out. And the, and the, the stats just don't support it. And, and so the funny thing is we would probably have less of a reaction if, if they just came right out. And, and the president did say, we are not alone. That'd be a great thing to do two nights before the election, right? We are not alone. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That would be perfect. Yeah. And yeah. if you vote for me, I'll go into it. <laughs> right? I'll tell you yeah. everything. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, everybody, they can argue about the budget and coronavirus and stuff, but you vote for me, <laughs> you'll get the real deal. That would yeah, that would yeah. seal it. Maybe, I mean, like, that may happen. It, it's possible. It's possible. Yeah, it is. But, you know, I know we are running down short on time here, but listen, I really, I do want to thank you for coming on the show, man. And I, I don't, I want everybody that's in the, over in the West that listens to the show to go out and, and go to your conference, man, that one you got. And what's the dates on that conference again, the last one that you're going to, that you're going it's to do? It's going to be May 29th and 30th of 2020. And so we're talking about a Friday night and a Saturday. It is honestly going to be my last conference ever. And it's called Finding Your Magic 2. If you go to youwillmanifest.com, you can learn about it. And if you go to my website, joshuapwarren.com, you can find all kinds of cool free videos and pictures. Go to my curiosity shop. You'll find things that are unique and handmade that you won't discover anywhere else in the world. Um, But, uh, hey, you know, even if you don't live out west, jump on an airplane. Las Vegas is it's the entertainment capital of the world. It's cheap to get here. It's easy to get here in and out. Um, but before we have to wrap up, you know, I, I just want to say this is my first time on your show, Joe, and uh, you're a really talented, great broadcaster. And it's been a pleasure to talk to you for three hours. So I look forward to our future conversations. And thank you so much for having me on the program. Well, man, you're very welcome. It's been an absolute pleasure for me, too. Yeah, it's been a fantastic conversation. And, um, yeah, go to the website, joshuapwarren.com. All of the uh, all of the info that we talked about tonight, all of that stuff is there. You can get you a wishing machine, too. I'm going to drop all of those links, too, for uh, the archives for you guys at the podcast. So if you, got, if you listen to the podcast and you got questions, we're going to have all of the links there as well, too. And, uh, yeah, we do got to get out here. I want to thank my producer, Pacho, for making the show happen tonight. Also, the people and the people that help with the Fringe FM, Jeremy, Amanda, Barbara, uh, and Eric Markham. We love all you guys, and I especially love all you Void Walkers in the Fringe FM chat. We'll see you guys tomorrow night. Same time, same channel. Good night. on this program do not necessarily reflect those of the Fringe FM, KTLK Digital Broadcasting, its sponsors, affiliates, or staff. Listener discretion is advised.